welcome podcast listeners and viewers and thank you for joining us on the Lightwave Digest podcast episode 12. We are here to bring you all the news, reviews, interviews on everything Lightwave and beyond. So without further ado, let's get this show on the road. Hello Andrew, another month have, have passed and we have another episode. How, how are you? There. I'm good. I've had a busy month. Uh, been doing all sorts of uh, fun things, um, going out for meals, um, partying. No, not really. <laughs> yeah, I'm too old for that, I guess. I'm, I'm just too old for proper partying. I, <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was at a, a wedding the other day, uh, which was very nice. Um, uh, and I, and I, but it wasn't like getting up and dance. It was a, a sitting around and having a bit of a natter, really. <laughs> mm, yeah having a beer or no, two no. and eating some good yeah. food i guess exactly exactly and you also have had um, a birthday right i have i i'm now not yet a half a century it's a little bit scary but i'm, I'm getting closer <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh no i'm ancient <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's so funny um, uh, because uh Tonight's guest, uh, we actually will talk to Tony Prowl or Prowl. Uh, yes. And um, he he says somewhere in the interview uh, that sometimes using Lightwave, you feel like a dinosaur because there are so many people that don't know about it. So, and that is why we yeah. do this podcast because we want to spread the word. Lightwave is out there. Lightwave is being de developed and, uh, and all that stuff. But stick around for that interview. It's going to be super fun. Uh, he is a really great uh, artist. It's, he's one of those, you know, people that you might not have heard about at all, but he, he's very, very talented. Uh, really, he, he, a really he's one of those people who he's always been there in the background and some people don't stick their neck out and make themselves known but you're kind of like oh actually no i've heard of this guy you know he's doing some really good stuff mm -hmm. very yeah. skillful very knowledgeable and he, and he has a lot of interesting ideas um yeah regarding the future of lightwave i thought were excellent um it depends on how many of those get into the edit we'll, we'll find out <laughs> <laughs> yeah true but, um, but uh, it's interesting as well because we recorded this a little while ago so uh you know like some of them got maybe brushed up on um you know the various things that have happened recently uh we'll, we'll see yeah we will see about that but uh yeah i i sort of have been doing uh, I'm, I'm i'm i think i could say that i'm actually done with the star wars project now my goodness, oh, you must yeah. be exhausted. It's always a lot well, of work doing these types of big projects, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, but I'm, but I'm, but I'm happy now. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually, I'm actually doing some. Uh, I'm actually coming back to the, to actually doing a render wrangling with Houdini and Redshift uh, and mm. getting into that stuff again, which is super super fun, uh, because, I, I I think I can say this. Uh, we we have you know, a couple of, of people that are doing code in our team and they have coded like a super, super tight pipeline that is sort of based on the shotgun desktop, uh, which is, uh, yeah, shot grid flow, whatever. It, yeah, it's actually, it's actually called flow now, uh, which is mm. weird. But anyways, um, so essentially it's it's so little manual labor when it comes to like what should I load? Which what file name? You know, everything's automated a lot. So oh, uh, well, that's that's good. I mean, I think um, that's something I'd like to see for Lightwave to try and take some of the tedium out of it by just kind of guessing a bit better, you know, and helping the artist. Mm, yeah. Um, but without it being like overly super technical, because I do sometimes feel a little bit like, especially when. I, and I've seen a few people this week posting on the forums going, how do I do this? And you're like, oh, you've been out of this for a while, haven't you? This is, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I keep forgetting how much Lightwave's changed since 2018 for people who haven't been. And, and, and it's really encouraging news to say that they're coming back. Um, people are, you know, getting invested in the new software, they're getting invested in the, the new concepts, but it's a little bit of a big step. So we need to almost go through that, like, kind of the pain process again for, for, for newbies. 
Yeah, um, true, true. <laughs> you know, um, and so obviously I, I've always been a passionate about helping out where I can. Mm, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. People on that. Um, but with that said, let's actually go into the news. Yes, what's been happening this week? Ooh. This, this <laughs> month, I mean. It's a month, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, but there's, even this week's been a lot. Um, yeah, sure. Well, well, well what's, what's been going on in, in Lightwave land and in the broader space, I guess? There have been a, a, a two more uh, uh, Saturday sneak peeks, as they are called. Yes. Which I think is absolutely fantastic that they do. Let's just, that concept... If it they is, can, it's fantastic. If, um, if, they if, only didn't do what I was going to say. They only didn't do one this week because uh, Andy's been having some technical problems with his internet. Oh yeah, so yeah. Hopefully yeah. If, they, if, if they can get that resolved, we should be getting these more regularly as they're coming up to the next version. So people are getting little, you know, little snippets and tidbits, things that are going to get their, hopefully get their wet, appetite wetted about yes. some of the features that's uh, coming into Lightwave, which several of which are old, um, old standby plugins, but now you just get with mm. lightwave and that's i think in terms of value added in terms of um you know uh, what, what you actually get with the software as a basic thing it's it's, it's a huge thing oh yeah absolutely. it's now it's it's, it's now going to be a big lot of like explanations of how did this work well <laughs> you've never if you've never used them before there's a lot of stuff oh yeah um, and and but but i think that these, this concept and I, I i actually asked in the live chat uh, the, the last uh, at the last uh, sneak peek they did last saturday uh was that um will you guys try to continue doing this even without you know throughout you know not just doing this uh, in front of a release actually do it on a at least a monthly basis or something like that and mm. and juice was like yeah we, we we are going to look into to try to do something like that because that is the main difference i think if they can do that that's going to that is actually going to be a huge difference from from you know uh the old the new tech years where when or days where when when of course back then i was in beta so so i had a little bit more information but all the others that weren't they were sort of like okay now it's going to be silent for nine months or something like that yeah and, just uh, just a silent <laughs> little black box of nothing and then but uh here, here's a new thing and they'd be like oh why didn't you do it that way because and, and if they <laughs> yeah, had exactly. a little bit more public interaction yeah um and I, and, I, and I hope and I think that's the way that it's going you know that they're taking on board what people are saying really a lot the sensible things because obviously people sometimes it's about like can I have a moon on a stick and you're like no <laughs> um <laughs> moon on a can stick. it come with this can it can it come with this thing which I've always wanted which has got nothing to do with lightwave also no yeah. um <laughs> sometimes there's a bit people get a bit carried away when it comes to feature requests but i think there's a lot of um especially with this version it looks like they're putting a lot of effort and emphasis into things that just uh, improve the quality and breadth of the software rather than necessarily new features i mean well, well some things are new features to lightwave but already existed and it's just polishing them getting the the interchanges getting the you know the, the the build so that they really mesh within the software oh yeah and that's a fun, funny segue when you say mesh because one of the things that the, they showed was updates to branch tool which now actually allows you to mesh those and you can also control them with splines and animate the splines as well oh uh so yes I, I missed that one i'm gonna have to watch that one um yeah. i've seen some of the others but that one I, I i i am finding the pro geo stuff incredibly exciting and they are creating quite a lot of really cool tools to go with it yeah um, so another cool thing that they showed uh i think this this isn't, isn't really a new feature but it's what's use sort of like learning this new paint weights tool and he showed how you can do gradients uh, i mean weight gradients so like in mm. oh it should be 100 in in the middle and 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 then it just fades out to zero percent at the edge or or in uh, vice versa and things like that yeah. which was kind of cool uh to see uh, with the painting tool in in layout Yes, they're um, they're developing the whole API. So eventually, that single weight painting tool will be available for every other tool, 
um, I think what's often happened in the past is that um, things are developed entirely in an isolated you know, system. So you'll get like a somebody invent a physics engine and it, that's self-contained. And can it interact with this? No, it can't. Can it interact with this? Oh, no, not at all. And they're all completely isolated. The idea with the um, this weight painting API, yes, there's been weight painting tools before, but they haven't interacted with other tools mm. so that it's available to. So you'll be able to take that weight map and interact with the nodes or with instance placement or any of the pro geo tools oh yeah yeah, um, yeah. Or, or what what a lot of people wanted for obviously is to just quick quick fast um interactive um bone weights which i think is why a lot of people want it oh um, yeah just absolutely ra rapidly rapidly sort of create um you know and ho i mean maybe we'll get some automated uh bone weighted generation i, I don't really know oh but. that would yeah this is not something that I have, that they have talked about or said anything no, about. No. This is something that, when you mentioned this, I thought directly, "Hey, AI waiting." Well, it, it, they have mentioned uh, in the recent past that they intend to, inc you know, put AI in, and that would be a pretty good candidate, actually. Something that can go well. These weights and th this. This bone is near those weights. Maybe I'll just link the two together and just automatically create a little bit of a blend between the two. And da -da, you know, and, and it does seem like the kind of thing that it can be quite complicated to you know get a handle on all of the different you know, like say you've got a hand, it's a good example, mm -hmm. working down all the little bones, and so you could just block it out and it goes, Oh, what you mean is this D done. And um there are starting to be little AI systems that you know for doing stuff like that so yeah you can say i remember uh, this is going on on a tangent here but but uh, i remember jimmy rig do you remember jimmy rig that uh, i do yes uh, that oliver holtz made and you he actually had automated waiting in there it wasn't the greatest but it was actually functional for seeing the motion capture or stuff that you did there so i mean it, it's 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 certainly something that could be done i think uh, uh, to great well, uh, if you've result. got a, a an automated tool and then you quickly just go right oh that's not bending properly i'll just go in there with the weight painting brush and just go tsh, 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 tsh. i'll fix that yeah that's yeah. kind of the type of thing where yeah that would be ideal something that it'll create something quick and dirty and it might not be the best and then you can go in as an artist and finesse that yeah. with a really good um weight painting tool um Let's see. Let's see what happens there. Yeah, and uh, talking about rigs and weight paint, weight painting, and all that stuff, we got uh, RH Rigget. Yeah, I, yeah, I just say Rigget. I'm, I'm not Rigget. sure. Yeah, because originally I don't know if it's going to keep the name. I don't know if have the said because um, obviously it was from Rebel Hill, which is Craig Moines. Yeah. Um, Oh, Moan, I don't know how you say his name, actually. <laughs> but anyway, Rebel Hill was his, his artistic trade name. And yes, yes, that's yes. basically it's what it's based out of. Um, so yes, they've managed to get the license for that to be able to appear in Lightwave now natively. Um, that's like an automated um, sort of rigging system where you can map uh, one rig onto another rig. Um, and then that allows you to sort of like, you know, very quickly adapt meshes from other software things like that and it's got a lot of really nice controls it's it's, it's very well regarded so um i've mm -hmm. personally not used it but everybody that i've heard say they use it absolutely loves it um it's incredibly in depth um a lot of controls and that's what it's all about isn't it for the artist yeah and actually andrew B bishop actually mentioned that he didn't mention which other software but there was another software that is kind of big in this industry that sort of copy pasted some of the features of a rig it yeah. uh, because it was just i mean wow i mean it, it, i mean uh, craig or rebel hill is a, such a talented guy wow and he's done this in in python right it, it's a python thing I as well i think it's, so yes yeah. so they'll have to again like a lot of the other um python things that are slowly migrating everything from python 2.7 to 3 so they'll also have to do that but now oh. we've got it they can they should be able to I, I doubt that any of the scripts are so complicated that they can't uh translate them but obviously uh, it means that if the software does go to python 3 these things won't die yeah so, yeah um, it's, it's another great thing about this yeah exactly 
and moving on from Brigitte, which was a huge thing. Um, I mean, that that's a one one of the bigger things uh, I, I have seen so far for Lightweight mm. 2024. But I, a, a funny thing here, I, I think Juice mentioned, um, no, I don't think, I know that Juice, Juice mentioned that uh, he recently have updated someone from Lightwave 6 to Lightwave oh, 2024. Wow. And they're that, also that's been, a big jump. <laughs> yeah, that's a big jump. And they, they also have seen a, a small increase in, in new users coming to Lightwave as well. This is why it's super important that they do this, get this, um, you know, advertising. You, a lot of people follow on YouTube. If you can pump out a lot of videos, that helps to get your views up. It, people will be going, hang on a minute, Lightwave's not dead. Lightwave is doing all this stuff. Lightwave's doing really cutting edge stuff. Um, I think that'll be a huge, a huge benefit. Another thing, node editor updates, uh, frames and yes. post-it nodes. Yes, that's um, super cool. Draw, drawing, that is really cool because I think sometimes if you look at a big node flow and you're like, what even is this? What 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 do all those parts do? You just draw a little rectangle around the thing or put a little note on it saying, this is for doing this. It means that anybody that's coming to the software um, can immediately go, ah, oh, right, this is what's doing all of this behind the scenes. Uh, this is what, what the function of this is. And I, I think especially if they start applying this to any scenes or, um, you know, like, like, like content that they're producing, then you can start deconstructing it and go, oh, well, I could take this bit and move that to there and do that, you know. And, and I think the thing that's nice about frames is when you drag the frame, it takes the contents with it. Last thing, let's let's move on. <laughs> Last thing here. Yes, yes. Up, uh, which is a small scale fluid simulator that yes. also have the ability to, to melt objects. Uh, it's written by S Steve Hurley. It was actually something re he released for Lightweight 2015 or something like that. He has now mm. been working with uh, uh, Lightweight Digital to update this now to actually be part of uh, Lightweight 2024 together with the guys. They own the code uh, because they bought it from him. Um, but he he seems to be part of the team right now uh, and actually helps out with uh, some of the coding. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on, but there, there is a bunch of people that they've um, getting involved. I don't know if he's involved full time um, or if it's just in, like an assist. Um, there's been talk in the past of a lot of the old devs coming back. And again, I don't want to drop names because I can't remember what's been said officially and what hasn't been yeah, said. But this was said officially, um, at least. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's it's really exciting because um, Steve Hurley is is a really knowledgeable guy. I mean, he did a, he's done multiple physics things. He's done like the he's done his own renderer. Yeah. Uh, obviously, he used to work with Steve Worley, yeah. who developed the uh, F prime, which is it's you know hugely famous from back in the day. Yes. Um, st still pretty impressive um, for what it did back then. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it was only really second in terms of uh, features and performance to say something like Arnold. And obviously, Arnold got worked on a lot later than that. So oh, yeah. uh, it, 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 it supports a lot of features that Lightwave doesn't have. But um, F-Prime was really cool back in the day. And, you know, you never know. We might start getting some of those features back again. And people do like it. Um, hopefully, we'll see some updates to the render, which have been mentioned are happening. Yes, they have so, mentioned that, but we haven't seen anything yet. They haven't showed anything ab about it. Show, well, they, no, they showed but, um, something way way back uh i think it yeah. was during the 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 uh may the fourth event they showed something about it but it was very minor um uh, yes hopefully oh, yeah. well, we'll... i mean it, it's 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 all up in the air there's a lot of things they're hoping to do whether or not they get out you know and it might come in a point one or a point two release as well so We'll just have to wait and see. Um, obviously, we'll, you know, we don't know. Um, I am trying to think. I think that's everything. Um, the only other thing that I was going to mention that's been in the news, I don't know. Have you been following what's been happening with Adobe? No. Tell me. Oh, no. Oh, oh. they've been in bother. Uh, they've been in bother. Um, quite how you want to take it. Basically, um, Adobe issued a change to their licensing agreement that... I mean, without, I don't want to, you know, get into a legal problem, but a lot of people have been going on about this for the last couple of weeks where they're saying, well, hang on a minute. Does this, they've effectively, they've effectively granted the rights of, um, they get access to all of your, um, 
products you know like so say you make something and you save it on your adobe cloud they then had access to that um they've oh. also been talking about like oh we'll 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 go in and we'll scan your stuff to make sure that you're not doing anything dodgy and you're like that's a bit invasive you shouldn't be going into my things oh wow um, and yeah and i mean it was heavily implied but never actually said because that was the problem is that they, they haven't written down a formal um agreement where people are going hang on a minute does this give them access to train their ai model on your work which could include your you know private copyright uh, data the first um person that i'd seen online mention this was a guy called duncan jones i don't know if you've heard of him nope oh well he's the son of uh david bowie ah uh -huh. oh wow okay yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're not talking about somebody like there's a nobody. He's like Duncan Jones. I mean, he, go, he used to be known as Zowie Bowie, you know, when he was younger, but he's gone by the professional name, I believe now. I, I don't exactly know how it works, as Duncan Jones. Uh, and he was like basically working on a project and he's like going, like, Adobe, um, you don't have access to all of my work and have the rights to have uh, copyrights to have the use of it. This is, this is entirely under NDA. How can you possibly change your license agreement to say this? I mean, you can go and look at this all. It's been online. Oh, wow. Uh, and I mean, they've they've tried to come back and do various like clarifications and say, oh, no, no, we didn't mean that. But you're like, mm, you left it so open. People are now ditching Adobe really badly. Oh, wow. Um, we'll see, yeah, so it, it, you, should, you should check it out. I mean, don't, you know, don't go off what I'm saying. This is my interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of people online who have really angered by it because um, they're kind of like, only obviously there's, oh yeah, and that was the other thing that's been quite big is the Supreme Court, not, not, basically the in America, I can't remember which professional body, are, are suing Adobe for their pra business practices as well. Oh, wow. Because wow. there's a whole thing where, yeah, yeah, basically, and, and it's like one of the, I, can't, I think it's like not the Supreme Court, but you know, like below that, you know, the, the Department of Justice, because they've got these like, they don't state emphatically or in a way that you can find without like jumping through hoops and literally going outside of the any of the help that you can view from within the contract that they can charge you a huge amount of money to cancel your contract with them. So say you you'll say, Oh, I'm gonna take two years and it'll be X money for per month for two years. But hidden, not available or viewable from the contract is a clause which says if you end this contact early, then you have to pay a couple of hundred extra dollars. Oh, sh oh, wow. That's, yeah. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and they're basically like, yeah, that's incredibly shady business practice. You'd expect that from me, like a really dodgy company, not like somebody that's like, you know, an industry leader. The, mm. the, the complete lack of transparency, they're basically being sued by the Department of Justice in America, uh, which is coming double double the, the whammy here from what, you know, the fact that their users are going, wow, you shouldn't be able to have any access to our, our contact. You know, it's, this is all, you know, like private, um so so mm, they're in a lot of trouble <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, I'm, 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 they're, in a, they're in a <laughs> i can see them just trying to backpedal on this uh, no, quite but it soon. has been they, they, they've been backpedaling like mad i think it was because when they originally the people saw this terms and conditions and went whoa you shouldn't be able to do that and then they made like a point of clarification and the point of clarification made it worse oh wow okay <laughs> Oh, and I think they've done like a further clarification since then. There's like loads of videos on YouTube about it. If you're fascinated by it, uh, it won't take you very much time to Google that. Trust me. Mm. Um, Google are in a lot of trouble. I mean, sorry, uh, Adobe are in a lot of trouble um, because this is the, the double whammies come where they've managed to really muck up their personal relations. There's a lot of people who've been quite angry about how much it costs for for Adobe subs. Mm. As well as that, on the flip side, is the fact that the um, you know the United States has taken them to court. Oh wow! So they are in a bit of a trouble. Holy crap! But, wow. But okay. I think that's that's this month's industry news. I think. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, enough waffling from us. Uh, let's yes. go ahead and uh, have a, a nice time with Tony Prowl. Uh, I hope you all enjoy. Welcome to tonight's guest. Like many, he had got into 3D on the Amiga Video Toaster system and since then used Lightwave on many different projects over the last 30 years. Welcome, Tony. Hi, Welcome. thank you guys. Welcome. 
Yeah, appreciate the invite. Oh yeah, I mean, a lot of fun. Yeah, I actually look through your uh, reel, and uh, you have uh, such a variety of, of stuff. <laughs> so that's super cool. And also, you guys, you, you're also doing like, um, what do you say? Uh, 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 architectural visualization with beds and living rooms and stuff like that as well right that's right that's correct that's the that's the current uh production pipeline that i use lightway for mm -hmm. oh cool, cool. All, all architectural even though occasionally i'll get into say some character stuff or something but yeah it's mainly architect stuff now mm -hmm. yeah that's super cool but before we go into that stuff i want to go back in the memory lanes of course mm -hmm. to, yeah. to to go we back learned. to oh, yeah. the, the, the child <laughs> <laughs> The Tony, the, the Tony. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, tell tell me, uh, you know, how how did you grow up, and and where, where when did you stumble across a computer the first time? All right. First, the dinosaurs came. No, we won't go back that far. <laughs> yeah, sadly. <laughs> no, actually, it was the Big Bang do, theory. So I was, do I you use even... Lightwave? Yes. So <laughs> dinosaurs were wandering across the Earth then. <laughs> no, actually, sometimes if you use Lightwave, you kind of feel like a dinosaur, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you use what now? Oh, geez. Back in my day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <it's> true. <laughs> so, yeah, my, my first, uh, I'll start a little bit earlier than Lightwave. So, you know, for, you get the, I get the family computer, right? So I'll start there because. Got a family computer, and though here's the best thing: I, I'm left-handed, grew up left-handed, and then when my when my uh, parents got the first family computer, you know, I became, I can do like use the mouse with my right hand because that's where they put it. <laughs> so it's oh, pretty yeah. kind of cool when you're working in 3D. Actually, I get to use both hands, <laughs> <laughs> and I got trained that way just because the, the family computer. But going back into my first starts of 3D, uh, you know, I, I was into video games a lot. I don't know, out here we have a place called, you know, GameStop. It used to be called Babbage's back in the day. I don't know if you guys had, or like video game stores or things like computer stores, software stores. Mm -hmm. So I started getting in, you know, to 3D when I started working there. And I just liked games. And at that time, uh, in the early 90s, uh, Sega had, you know, like Daytona USA or uh, those type of games that use polygons. You know, oh. uh, so I was like, oh, Polygon, so cool. 3D, so cool. Uh, even the flat shaded, you know, games back then. So I just started getting into 3D, like, oh, how can I use this stuff? You know, by that time, you know, we had Doom, right? And it was all still pixel based mm -hmm. or, um, so I basically said, oh, let me, let me crack open my computer. Oh, I can get a new CPU for this because my computer couldn't run this software I got, I imagine it being working at a computer store and you see a 3D book oh, about 3D. Oh, cool. I want to do 3D. And then you go home like, man, I can't run it. Why not? So I had to upgrade my uh, Intel processor. I don't even remember what Pentium it was, but I had to basically make it do math processing. So I had to go from mm. SX to a DX processor so I could do math processing. And I had to update the RAM so I can run in DOS. 3d studio <laughs> oh so that's my first first 3d like messing around <laughs> as far as like ooh, you know you remember the abyss i would make a ball and try to make it like look liquid, liquidy inside dos i didn't really get that far in it or you know typing in some text <laughs> and hitting the render button yeah because uh, yeah. it was really slow and it was dos and then we fast forward a few years then when i go to uh columbia college in chicago because i'm from chicago originally uh, they had a 3D department there, uh, and the first learnings for 3D was, guess what, video toaster? Uh. Ah. Video toaster and the Amigas using Lightwave. And man, that that was awesome. Like, wow, this was so cool. You know, the really neat thing is the teacher I had uh, was pretty neat. Imagine, our, our like, he kind of knew Lightwave. I don't know if he just got the job because he maybe knew a little 3d he would have us go in modeler and i think that time what was it version three on the amigas or something like that mm -hmm. something like that and he would go through like the tab like the modify tab he'd make first an object and he would just click every button this button does this and this button does that and then he'd get to a button that might just scramble the geometry and he's like ah, you can make a nice piece of garbage with this button here <laughs> so that's what he would do, just literally go through every button and click on it and see what if it did anything to the model <laughs> that's how i learned lightweight it was a really uh cool learning experience on the amigas and then of course pc came out with version 4 i bought it right away 
And then, you know, the rest as far as history, like as far as like that was the 3D application I um, started learning and because I could afford it too. You know, I, I did max out a credit card to get it. But at that time, I did, <laughs> did buy it because at the only other option I remember wanting to save for an SGI system. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, I need a, I need an SGI because in, at Columbia College, you first started with Lightwave and then you went to the SGI labs and they had Alias Power Animator and they just got Soft Image, Soft Image. Mm. I don't know how you guys pronounce it there. <laughs> so I was like, oh, I can't wait to get that. So I need to see how much one of these costs. And then when I saw that the <laughs> SGI is like, you know, I forget, $6,000 maybe for Indie. And then the software, Alias Wayprint, was $30,000. I'm like, huh, I don't think I could get bored. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, bought a, I bought a PC, I bought Lightwave, you know, I bought Photoshop. I was trying to build my own little 3D lab for my home because I knew I wasn't going to afford an SGI. <laughs> well, oh. it in the books. Wow. Yeah, that's interesting uh, <clears throat> because here in Sweden, we had a school called Graphic Studio. And they used to be lightweight with Amigas based, uh, uh, you know, teaching 3D. Yeah. And, and in, the, in the mid 90s, they went, they actually sold all their Amigas to demo scene, you know, coders and programmers in the demo scene in Sweden because they went from uh, the Amiga and Lightwave to XSI. Uh, on soft image, soft image on uh, on uh, uh, silicon graphics machines, so mm, they upgraded yeah. to that stuff. Uh, I remember yeah. that. Oh, that's the dog's barking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did did you did you have other interests? Uh, you know, growing up. I mean, uh, because I I, oh, I, yeah. I I was sort of like into music and stuff and playing in bands and stuff like that when I grew up. Did, did oh. you have something? Oh. All right, all right. No, um, no worries, okay. no worries. Uh, music, uh, yes, I loved listening to music. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as far as other interests, I used to like sports a little bit. I, I liked basketball was my sport, uh, kind of the high school uh, era, um, just because I grew up in Chicago. So I grew up during the Michael Jordan era, so who didn't oh. like basketball at yeah. that time? <laughs> you know, so it was a lot of fun, uh, at least, you know, sports. And I'm kind of a tall, thin guy, so it kind of was right up my alley compared to, like, say, football. Um, but I was always interested in art. I remember being young and wanting to just, you know, art was what I loved. I used to sit there with my brother and since we were into video games, we would draw, you know, Mario or the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or whatever was popular at that time frame. So art was always kind of a, a thing for me. And then playing video games, you're like, wow, people can make this stuff. That's so cool. You know, I want to, I want to make video games when I'm older, um, which, you know, was the goal, even though I did end up making games, but it was for the uh, casino companies. But growing up, yeah, it was definitely basketball and chasing girls and <laughs> of course. doing that kind of stuff, uh, as well as, you know, um, hanging out with friends, that, that kind of thing. But growing up in Chicago in such a lively city uh, was a lot of fun. But yeah, going outside I'll... a lot, besides the winters. Ah, nice, nice, nice. <laughs> I was going to ask you, did, did you do that thing? Because we, when you were about 10, where you magically discovered how to do 3D drawing, I remember, remember specifically me and my brother doing this thing where I would draw a car, and then you just sort of isometrically projected all the lines off oh, the yeah. corners, and you're like, I've made it 3D. It was long before actual you know, software or rendering or anything, but you know how you figured out how to do the magic trick. <laughs> yeah, you start like the, like the, uh, the uh, grid paper, and then you start making cubes. Like, yeah. you know, back then, everything was pixel-based for video games. So first I'm mimicking that, and I'm like, wait a second, I can add shading on one side. Or, you know, back then, too, you, you're right, we didn't have phones that where, you, where you can look how to do things. You'd have to go to the library mm -hmm. and get some art book. You're like, wow, yeah, I'm draw yeah. this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's uh, essentially also one of my questions is like, because back then, I mean, as you said, there was no internet and the information into how to do 3D and stuff was very, very slim. So how, I mean, for me, it was a huge uh, sort of hill to c climb over when I started to fiddling around with 3D on the Amiga back in the days. So how, how and, and some people 
that I know that was, was had a talent for it, they just couldn't do it because they it, they, they they felt it was too complicated. What what do you uh -huh. think made you stay stay on target, so to speak? Well, I think once once you started learning it, like I learned it in a school, so that definitely helped. I wanted to go to school for that. I went to school for film and video uh, with a concentration in uh, computer graphics and CGI. And you know, once once you if you liked painting and drawing, say in high school here, right, and you wanted to go, go into that field, you know, you can get into the you know, more illustrator type field. But 3D, I was always uh, attached to it because I loved video games. Like I said, uh, Sega back in the day, mm. they were, you know, the the number one. Like yeah, I'd go to the arcade, sit there, and I'd look at Virtual Fighter, like, wow, how do they make that? those polygon characters and then they Daytona brought in texture maps like oh that's cool it's kind of like during the light wave when you're when you're learning it and then when you learn from the Amigas I don't know if you guys remember the the, the perspective viewport and modeler the model would wiggle like this oh yeah mm. and the reason it the reason it did that is so you can see if you were missing any polygons <laughs> so <laughs> if, the, if you weren't didn't have a polygon it's like oh I see there's a hole there uh, you know, and then you saw when the PC version came out, OpenGL, I was just so entrenched in technology mm. uh, from the video game side. And and then I know I liked to do character animation or getting into that rigging and, and all those things. So it just, once you got in behind that seat and you did it every week for, for your learning for college, you're like, yeah, this is what I want to do. And I want to keep uh, crafting my skill to use it. Oh wow! No. Yeah, it's kind of yeah, that's super cool because uh, one of the big things I did, I did a couple of sort of commercial stuff with cracked software, but I didn't get any money for it. It was during yeah. the school school days, but then I actually had a cracked cracked version of Lightwave <laughs> Seven. Oh no. wow! They never ran good. Lightwave like like Seven never seemed to work so good. No, but but. Uh, um, I, I learned. Bad. Shame uh, on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm, I'm super bad. No, no um, one, no one else has done this. Literally, never. No, no lightwave <laughs> users no. ever even run a cracked software. But yeah, it's yeah, well, some of do the you, first. Do you beep that part out of the interview? Do you go beep or like nah. McBurry pitch or something? You know, <laughs> what, it, you know what it is. I think, I think everybody when when we all started because we're that old, it was like, oh, <laughs> I, 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 I am fifteen and I want to try three D. How much is this software? Eighty five thousand dollars. I wonder if there's a cracked <laughs> version of this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but you know. Uh, um, but yeah, it's it, now a lot cheaper. It's more affordable these days. To be fair, yeah, and yeah. there was you know free software. Wink. Um, <laughs> but back then, it was the prices were ludicrous, weren't they? If I recall. Oh yeah, I mean like thirty thousand dollars for Alias Wavefront, and then they went yeah. to Maya after that. It's like just an insane amount of money compared to at least like, even Lightwave. I bought Lightwave mm -hmm. version four for the PC for eight hundred ninety five dollars. I mean, I bought it on a credit. I had a credit card. And I'm like, I just decided to buy all the, you know, the computer, the 3D, just for for my when I was living in an apartment. And I'm like, yes, I have my own little studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, mm -hmm. there's there's so many cool things. Uh, but yeah, but one of the first idiot things I did was actually do visual effects for a what do you say a, a movie uh, here in Sweden with with guinea pigs and uh, talk, cool. talking guinea pigs and. Uh, uh, there was a butterfly shot, and, yeah, a butterfly coming out of, of a cocoon and stuff like that. So it was like, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it now. Okay, uh, it doesn't look super good, but 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 still, it was something. You know, it was <laughs> it, you 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 have to start somewhere, right? <laughs> you do, yeah. My first 3D probably looks horrible, but I always try to do way too much. Like I remember in school, my first model was like a freight train. I wanted to do a freight train, and I wanted to hit a car on a on a on its track mm. and i remember i mean I, I wish i could find i probably could dig it up somewhere uh because we kind of need to see and i took the do you guys remember the porsche model that lightwave came with in the mm. it came inside the uh the bundle right so i just used that and i had the train like hit it and the car just flipping all you know i just rotating it and flipping it in some direction it looks pretty cheesy <laughs> <laughs> but i'm like it looks so just neat at that time and the lens flares everywhere i'm sure i had lens flares on everything 
Oh yeah, oh the lens flare. <laughs> yeah, that was so funny when that actually got introduced into Photoshop. Uh, yeah, everyone, yeah, yeah, everyone yeah, right? put the like, lens flare somewhere. It was <laughs> out of place, but it's like, oh, that's that that's that extra five uh, percent, you know, to to the yeah, image. Yeah, then, then, then <laughs> look at the early, you know, the two thousands. Like Jerry Brockheimer was Mister Lens Flare. It's like, hey, brought it back, just yeah. cooler looking. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so uh, yeah, it was great when they got new features like lens flare or motion blur in the viewport. You're like, oh my god! Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. Lens flare and uh, yeah, that's actually interesting because there are not a lot of other tools out there that actually have that real time. Oh, no, they don't. They're they just don't, built uh, in. Yeah. Yeah, like just, it was just, always built from from a cinematographer's perspective, and so they created a lot of tools which were things that a cinematographer wanted, rather than just a three D artist. Um, yeah, true. so I think that's I why mean, it got it was, used heavily. Yeah, they, like you can do, you can view the fogging, the you know, in, in Lightwave as well. Oh yeah. So it's it was just pretty pretty neat to have all these tools. Sky Tracer, remember Sky Tracer? That oh, thing was mm -hmm. awesome. Uh, so many just always toys to play with. And that was always a neat thing about Lightwave too. I mean, their versions, every time they had a new one, you really just had so much cool stuff to play with. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's pretty deep. It's a deep software. There are things in Lightwave I still don't know. <laughs> yeah. Somewhere. Yeah. I mean, so. just looking at um, what some people, I, I, what about, uh, Chris Jones, Jones, for example, oh. his character mm. stuff. I mean, uh, that still looks really good, and that was sort of like 2014, and that video of, uh, is it called Ed, I think it's called, uh, where he has done this photorealistic head, and, mm -hmm. and then it's puppeteered by a hand, and then the hand goes yeah. out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, that mm -hmm. stuff is unbelievably good uh and i i'm not at that, that level at all you know uh, when it comes to oh to... no like the displacements <laughs> he was using with the muscles and all that it's like yeah yeah that's... like how are you doing this in that way because <laughs> 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 i have no i no idea but it's the, yeah i couldn't believe how well done that was and you know it's like man you just wish like hey new at that time it was new tech obviously like why don't you hire that guy for a couple of weeks and see what he wants because whatever he wants is going to be worth it. Look at that oh, yeah. work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Just incredible. There's a lot of incredible lightwave artists. I think one of the earlier ones uh, I used to watch videos and stuff was uh, Teron, mm -hmm. I think was his name. It was oh. like, wow, wow. Such cool stuff. Yeah, well, well, it's the reason why Taron is that I mean, obviously, you kind of, you know, oh, I know, I kind of know him, but you know, when you learn someone's whole story, which is the really cool thing about these, um, he was heavily involved in Project Messiah. And oh, so that's, Project Messiah that's, was awesome. Which is why he has done all these really high level stuff, which is the type of thing that you can only do because he did it in Project Messiah, which is absolutely we want to try and get some of that back into Lightwave. Mm, um, yeah. yeah, that's great. Project Messiah. Uh, when I worked uh, at the gaming company, so a little history about the gaming sites, that was my, um, so I worked at a post house before that uh, in Chicago, and we used alias Power Animator uh, mm. at this post house. And I, I was just tasked, because I was the grunt of that 3D <laughs> crew back then, <laughs> I couldn't really do the fun stuff. But it, I mean, working at this post house was pretty amazing, though. They had like every mag trade magazine you can just relax I had like a full bar a pool table it was like it's really loungy uh but my i remember my office was like in a closet <laughs> like in the, <laughs> the closet because i was the low man on the totem pole um and i just had to model things like oh we need this because they did uh, commercial work so oh i need a briefcase model me a briefcase oh, okay <laughs> oh yeah, we need you to go take this camera and go get some pictures of concrete outside because it was downtown Chicago. Oh, okay. So just their grunt and just did little things here and there. But it was a fun experience to see their pipeline. They had they had a motion capture room there um, that used is it the Onyx? Like the SGI that's as big as a refrigerator. Mm, and then yeah. it had all the the instead of being, you know, they didn't have sensors back then with the little white balls. It was like a marin marinette. They had the put cords all on the person oh, right, to get all the data. So like, you know, they go to the ceiling and then the guy's all attached to these cords to get all the joints. <laughs> wow. Crazy. So it was really, really funny. Yeah. 
it was neat. The biggest things they did there though, were like the jewel. There was a grocery store in Chicago called jewel. They used to do the, the shots where you would lay out all the food. And then the, this camera on this arm would pan, pan over them, like really, oh, wow. you know, motion control kind of stuff. Uh, but we used uh, power animator there. And then we were learning Maya version. We were zero point something. I don't remember. It was all right. It was like, eh, power animator is still better. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when, when um, was my uh, release? Was it 98? Yeah, it was the late 90s. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. And then from there, I went to uh, my long career in gaming, which was called a company called Williams Entertainment, or WMS. And they were also part of Midway. I don't know if you guys know Mortal Kombat. So they were mm -hmm. kind of part of... Oh, yeah. uh, that group but i was in the casino division they had a pinball division a casino division and then of course the game division and i would always go across the street because I, I saw where they did the green screen for the mortal kombat characters and they used light wave uh back in the day midway mm. um, early on there for their backdrops and 3d stuff for their games which is neat to know but then uh that's where i first saw uh project messiah because they had some article that was on one of the doors and like, oh, I hope this becomes part of Lightwave. And at that time, everyone's like, oh, I hope Lightwave, because I just saw that T-Rex thing, that demo with the T-Rex where they moved the bone after it was animating and it didn't have to reskin it. Like, what? <laughs> it was so <laughs> cool. It was like, wow, what a great plugin. I, I never, I did get Project Messiah when they, they kind of went away and then they came back. Oh, yeah. Bit, and I had... It was pretty cheap, and I downloaded it and had it like yep. its own dongle. Yes, um, but I didn't really use it so much. It, but it was pretty. It's still very, very cool. I hope that'd be great if Lightwave Digital could. I don't know. Do something yeah, with that. I, I remember we actually because back then we used uh, Maya Motion Builder for animation, Lightwave for pretty much all rendering uh, except for the effects, and the effects were actually done in 3D Studio Max using wow. and we used point oven uh, so that allowed us all to be in sync but then uh, i remember we had to re-sculpt some cloth sim simulations and chronosculpt didn't exist back then uh, but we mm, had project yeah. messiah the, the the one and that you, that one actually allowed you to sculpt on geometry over time oh that's cool so you, we can we could actually paint so we had a couple of interns actually that that we that we put on hey can you paint this so that this cloth doesn't penetrate you know this jacket doesn't penetrate the back or whatever and then just they they used project messiah uh because we had bought a bunch of licenses when it was so cheap you know so, yeah so we could just put and and, it, and then they just baked out a new mdd file that then rippled into all the applications for rendering and simulations or rendering and effects and stuff like that so yeah it was super super nice uh, to just mm. have that tool just doing that little thing and then of course later on chronoscope came out and that just blew everything away <laughs> yeah chronoscope's <laughs> awesome i kind of yeah. wish it would be integrated well i mean they kind of have it integrated in lightwave with the um what's the plugin that they got i forgot the name of it uh, uh, no. Meta metamorph um, metamorph i think it's metamorphic metamorphic. Yeah, metamorphic. Yeah, yeah metamorphic which is kind of like a chronoscopic like uh, a couple of years ago that's how i would paint my instances on i would use that tool because ah, <laughs> mm. you can paint them using that tool to paint the instances oh yeah true true yeah so that was my pre-2023 instant painter <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. really cool tool but uh Back to the back way, uh, yeah. you know, so when I got into gaming, um, it was fun. So I got hired to do uh, casino art. So at first, you know, was, I had a buddy working there and I'm like, hey, you interested in looking for, uh, you know, our art job and, and it's for casino games. I'm like, oh, casino games. I didn't, I didn't really want to get into that at first because I was working at a post house before that. But the post house work was a little slow. And like I said, I was just the grunt. So I didn't really get to do the fun stuff. Um, mm. and, and I didn't want to go to California. Like a lot of the, uh, people who graduated Columbia from film, they would go to California, like all the VFX houses. I'm like, Oh, maybe I should go there. But you know, you hear how they treat people <laughs> and you're like, ah, oh, I want to, you know, kind of be a little bit more stable. 
Mm. And so I took the interview for the gaming company and, and I got it, uh, got the job. And I first started with the paper reels. Like I just did the illustrated art for the reel symbols. But what was really cool is back then, I don't know if you guys know the old pinball games, how they used mm -hmm. to have the little dot screen at the, yeah, yeah. on the yep. back with the high score on it. Yes. Oh, so right. the, the casino games had that too. So the, the old one arm bandits with the slots had a little dot matrix screen on it as well. And what I decided to do when I'm working for this uh, company, I'm like, hey, I'm going to make, make my 3D graphics work with that dot matrix screen. So I used the Lightwave 3D to basically create all the graphics and animations for this dot matrix screen, mm. uh, which was really, they they like, what? You can turn your 3D to animations up there? That's so cool. Because we had like, I think we got like 10,000 frames of storage on this, this dot mm. matrix thing. Mm. So I could basically create these kind of elaborate 3D animations that would run on that, which was re really, really neat. And they're like, that's so cool because we only had three shades of light to work with, if that makes mm. sense. Like you yep, had yeah, off, yeah. which is black, and then the brightest color is on, and then you got some in between for gradients. So uh, my light wave models and things I used to use were all shaded that way, and like just black uh, and red, <laughs> basically. <laughs> But you can do some, I did Mr. Monopoly animations up there. I did a whole host of crazy animations all in 3D for this little dot matrix screen. So it was pretty neat. Wow. Yeah, well, yeah. I, 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 because I, I love pinball games and especially the, the sort of like the slightly more modern ones, you know, that came in the late 90s, you know, where they actually had that really cool animations on that dot matrix screen, as you say. Yeah. And, and I remember playing the Jurassic Park game or pinball uh, uh, game, and it had so many cool animation. I was like, how the heck do they do these animations on that little screen there? You know, uh, yeah. and, and now you tell me well, that. It was, okay. was deep paint before it was deep paint. <laughs> <laughs> Deep paint is what we originally used. Yeah, oh, uh, it was yeah. actually called uh, uh, Pro Motion back at you know in the let's say late '90s for Windows instead of you know the Amiga. Mm -hmm. But basically, it was Deep Paint. It had the animated stamps where you can put down animated stamps, and that's how actually all the Lightwave stuff got uh, passed through. So it would render it all, put it through Deep Paint or Pro Motion, which that's what it was called to create the assets for the programmers, uh, oh, which is pretty, wow. pretty neat. <laughs> cool. So see another Amiga win there. It was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, the Amiga is everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> it just, yeah, really good tools that worked great for that, that uh, pipeline for us. Like it, especially the promotion. I mean, you can build your own palettes. Uh, mm. You can build your, you had to build your colors, cycle base colors for effects, you know, like if you need to make it rain and, do all these things with the palettes and I can easily take a light ray rendered image, build a palette for it. Especially when we started doing the video stuff where you actually got full color. Now it's still like 191 colors is what we had to work with, but mm. did the ring, all that stuff, the, the deep paint or, or promotion really can control it nicely to make it pretty much almost like your 3d render. Oh, wow. So. Yeah. That's super cool. Now yeah. you have mentioned a bunch of things here, but, but other tools, I mean, we've talked about project Messiah. We have talked about, did you, did you actually use project Messiah or did you just see uh, it? Just a little bit for myself when I, when I bought that, trying its render engine out cause it had the render engine in it. Oh yeah. Just, that's true. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm, just messing with its shaders and pipeline. Uh, but you know, my day to day for the gaming company was Lightwave. And then uh, we moved to Max as well. We were kind of a dual pipeline because mm -hmm. uh, I ran a 3D team there. So when we got pretty big, and this is more in the 2000 era, I ran a, a pretty big team. And we can, did all the 3D graphics and animation for all the casino games for the company for around the world. So because we had an Australia one, we had a Vegas studio, we have studios everywhere. But in Chicago, we were the hub for all the 3D content. Oh, wow. Uh, and a lot in the reel that's there is uh, is uh, Max, V-Ray, and Lightwave. So Lightwave I used a lot for the effects um, and some test renderings. I would even do all of my development in Lightwave 3D uh, since I got to run the team and I get to use what I want. <laughs> <laughs> and then I would say, hey, guys, it needs to look as pretty as my Lightwave render. You go do it in Max now. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> 
So nice. I, would, I would convert the files for them into Max. We had a pretty good pipeline and same thing like you. We didn't use point oven. I forgot what we used because Max had a point cache and someone made a plugin for Lightwave that basically took the MMD files or export what uh, the point cache file that Max liked. Okay. Um, it- is that not built into Lightwave, or was there one before that? Unfortunately, no, it wasn't. So MMD was a standard, but Max didn't like that file type. Yeah. I think it was a .p, .pc, maybe .pc, point cache file. I think it was like .pc. So I would do that, because I did a lot of, um, on the Lord of the Rings ones that are in the demo, uh, that's when Bullet first got introduced into mm. Lightwave. So I used Bullet, but I did use the old... Uh, hard effects and cloth effects for things too. It was a nice mix. Uh, but I had, I needed a way to get the stuff back into max. So imagine the yep. character animation comes from max because into light wave and I just start blowing shit up in light wave. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. so I would have to figure out the solution to get it all back. Um, and then the only weird things since since max max's Z is up, it's not yes. in and out. So, yep. you know, we, we did a lot of, um, cool node hierarchy development to correct, correct these weird things most of the time it was it was a pretty great pipeline though i haven't got where the camera would match perfect too from lightwave to max so mm-hmm. if i needed to render out stuff in lightwave i would could render out hypervoxels i can render out volume volumetrics all that stuff out of lightwave and did composite and after effects with the v-ray renderings and all that stuff mm, so yeah. it was a really really cool mixed pipeline i mean we used the zbrush we use a lot of tools oh yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah i was going to ask you about you know what other tools you have added so to your workflow so you're i mean obviously you have been using maya you have been using 3d studio max uh yeah just can, can you can you sort of walk 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 us through what what you have added to your tool set throughout your career yeah so another one we used quite heavily because uh, we were one of the first companies in gaming to introduce real-time 3D. And I don't know if you mm-hmm. if you guys are any gamers from that era, one of the big render engines at that time was called uh, RenderWare. Uh, it was used like in GoldenEye, uh, oh, on the Nintendo okay, 64. Okay. So, it, you know, like how you get the Unreal splash screen, you would see RenderWare come up in front of a lot of games. So we introduced uh, RenderWare as our engine. And the funny thing about RenderWare, which I... Uh, actually love about it. It actually is a light wave based studio. Crichton, Crichton Games, was it? Or Criterion? I don't remember the name. Uh, they did the Burnout series. I don't know if you're familiar with the Burnout series at all. That was on the, was it Xbox? I think Xbox. There's another PlayStation. That was the one with like the kind of triangular shaped like pod racing cars and it, you were in a truck. No, no, not Wipeout. Uh, that's Wipeout. Wipeout is pretty Wipeout, cool. sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, this this was Burnout was a series where you. It was such a cool game. Like it's a race race car game basically, uh, but they had crazy bonus levels where you can just drive the car into traffic and try to cause as much destruction as possible. <laughs> but it was oh. all done in Lightwave. Uh, I think even oh, New Tech wow. did a uh, uh, article on them, and we we were, we were like, yes, we're going to use this for our engine in our games. Like, Yay! So I'm expecting Lightwave plugins. You know, like yes. <laughs> But no, we didn't get the lightweight. We got the max plugins. Boo. <laughs> but you know, I still use Lightwave heavily for that. Like uh, in the reel, there's some Top Gun footage. Uh, there's the one with Dirty Harry, which is based on, you know, the movie uh, Dirty Harry, <laughs> where we made, created uh, all San Francisco. It's all real time. And then the modeling and, and all the, the whole environment was done in Lightwave. And then we brought it into Max for mm-hmm. exporting into the game engine. Uh, mm. So that was a, still a cool pipeline. And even in those pipelines, I used to render out uh, shadow mapping uh, all in Lightwave mm. to be put on top of the, as a pass on top of the, the textures. So you get, you know, you get shadowing effects in real time. So that was huge. Uh, and then fast forward when we finally got to a new uh, uh, engine, then we moved over to Unity 3D. Uh, and Lightwave works great with that as well. So mm-hmm. it, it it seems to find its production, but it was always mainly um, Max as usually that everything had to go through that first, uh, unless you know it can go from Lightwave to Unity if if I was working on it because it didn't really matter. <laughs> as long as I had an FBX somewhere, 
you can import it into uh, uh, 3D Max as well. So multi-pipeline indeed, a lot of tools. Um, so, and I, I've used Unity quite a lot with Lightwave for my own gaming company, where we released uh, games and that was our pipeline Lightwave to Unity. Uh, and a lot of fun stuff, like the stuff you see in, in the real, there's some Wizard of Oz character stuff where they're all animated on these cards in Lightwave. That that all makes its way into Unity. They were for transitions and things like that. But mm -hmm. the entire world could be brought in. And you, know, you have to play around a little bit more world because well, for the phone, right? So your phone mm -hmm. memories yeah. and stuff like that, you, you had to really think of how to construct it good so it just doesn't chug on a phone. But baking in all the light maps, baking in all the GI. So uh, I, I even use Lightwave with Photoshop. <laughs> Uh, and that was cool. So you would export a model and they had rendition. You guys remember Lightwave yeah. rendition? <clears throat> yes, I do. I do. I used it a little bit, uh, <clears throat> but eventually all I did was I got the model of our casino. Um, so we used to do the product development for the machines and how they would look. And I can bring them into uh, Photoshop and then you can retexture them there. Like for the 2D artists, because 2D artists don't like to touch 3D sometimes. Yep. Mm. So if you give them a 3D model in Photoshop and say, you can just swap out the textures in Photoshop and make your little mock-up. So, uh, so yeah, Lightwave actually, I think I used it in every single pipeline I could uh, back in the day, which was really neat. Since I had it as an arsenal from in my pocket, I'm like, I'm using it everywhere. <laughs> yeah, of course. I mean, yeah, <clears throat> it, it's it's sort of... A little fun thing, uh, you know, working at Ubisoft now for 18 years. And, and that's of course, awesome. And of course, uh, I mean, when I started, we sort of moved on to Maya. We left Lightwave and then Lightwave 9 came out and things got better. And so we moved back to Lightwave and actually, yeah, whatever. Oh, wow. But but, but, uh, but nowadays we're using Houdini and, and Redshift. But uh, I still have problems that I need to solve, you know, when I deal with lots of data coming from the game engine and it, it needs to go into become a reference mesh for the animators and yeah. you know it could be like a th a several thousand objects and Maya just dies crash the desktop and I try to open that FBX <laughs> so yeah Lightwave actually is pretty good we had that same thing we used to do Terrigen I don't know if you know Terrigen sometimes yeah. to make a uh, just yep. make ground planes and when we were doing the Top Gun game we needed to make uh just these repeatable ground planes for the real-time engine, but they look hilly enough and look different enough. Ooh. Terrigen would have quite oh. dense meshes. And in Max, we would try to bring them there and Max would just cra you know, crash and burn. Uh, but I could bring it into Lightwave Modeler, which is, you know, modelers can be pretty slow, but for this, they're pretty dense. Like, you know, you can't even see the polygon, it's just white. And Lightwave would manage to actually reduce the polygons. Uh, you know, it would take a little while, it would sit there, like, I hope it's still working, but it would go ahead and boop, uh, do that so we could reduce the meshes to get to the game engine, which yes. is pretty neat. So yeah, we used it quite a lot to troubleshoot, uh, compared to what we were struggling with Max. I mean, we had a, Max is a love hate for me. I used it quite a lot, but boy, some of its workflows are like, that is just mm. horrible. <laughs> like, well, uh, here's a funny uh, story on Max, because we had a render farm and we did use V-Ray, but we used even V-Ray um, with the standard render engine because V-Ray can be slow. Uh, mm. It was a pretty GI system. I would say a lot faster than Lightwave would have been back then. Um, probably even pretty good now. But um, when you send stuff to the render farm uh, for V-Ray and in Max, if you go to the its normal render tab, there, I forgot the checkbox, but there's some checkbox you have to uncheck or basically what it does, it will render one frame over the next frame. It just saves out one frame over the next one. So if you oh. had like 5,000 frames of animation and you send it to the farm uh, to go render and you say, all right, by tomorrow morning, I'll check it, check it. I'll check all the renders, make sure they're good. And then you come back and the one, the one frame you see is the last frame only. Oh, God. And you're like, what the heck happened? And it's because this little checkbox, which is so silly because it wasn't even related because there's two parts. They have a batch rendering in Max where you, that's where you would set up all your render states. Really, really nice. I hope Lightwave gets nice states. I know 
the OD tools or pro tools will have that. Yeah. And I think that's, that's so helpful. Uh, but that's re in max, you'd set up all your states and all your renders to the net, uh, network through their render networking thing. Mm -hmm. And if you'd left that thing that was checked because it was checked by default and the other, the normal render, like when, if you say you're just doing a st static frame, then it would just render one frame over the next one <laughs> for the Ooh, entire wow. sequence. And you're like, oh. <laughs> so essentially yeah. it's just, uh, was it just rendering one frame and then it didn't progress or how? how uh... No, it, it progressed, but it just kept rendering. Like imagine, I, I don't know if it was the first frame, but with that checked, basically it said, okay, I'll render frame two, but I'll save it as the first frame zero 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 ah, zero zero okay, ah, okay. Again, zero 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 so when, when you come back tomorrow you just have one frame rendered which would be the last <laughs> but it technically it just overwrites that one file over and over and over oh, okay wow <laughs> uh, yeah that sounds painful yeah. <laughs> it happens that happens several it. times too you're like really it's like <laughs> you just wish they they didn't talk to each other inside their software like what yeah you know or or, or at least have that checkbox in the where you're setting up all your rendering passes and yeah and states and all that because that's what you hit to render you can hit the render button there and it's funny that it's connected to the the other tab in the other oh, yeah. rendering part it's like why <laughs> why <laughs> so, yeah a lot of uh max headaches and max files can get come corrupt too we had that mm -hmm. happen a lot i never actually had that happen in a lightweight file it's very very i mean yeah. LWSs are well, mass... actually fiber effects i think fiber effects has done yeah, that well, to me but, no, <laughs> but, no, no then again, but then again if you if you <laughs> yeah. open the lightweight scene file you can you can go in and edit it and actually remove yeah that. yeah the binary file yeah yeah I have a programming buddy uh, who we we made all the casino games for um, our own company for apps and stuff. He he loves Lightwave. He used to talk about it uh, as well in that kind of grain. You're like, oh, Lightwave is great because it you can open the file and and parse it the data in different ways. And for programmers, yeah. they're like, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what that's how Janus. I don't know if you remember Janus, but but that oh, one, yeah uh -huh. yeah. Um, that, that's I'm sure I bought Janus. That was such a plug-in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or... <laughs> it was absolutely a nightmare to get into, from what I heard from others. I, I was part of the the development of that uh, because I was actually. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I was part of. Uh, uh, you know, I was the number one tester for Learning Ang who wrote that tool, and I was, and we were using it in production all the time. Uh, so he got so much good data from us you know on what to fix and uh, but yeah that one i mean at, at one point i think i had 80 layers 80 scene files to render for a oh. single shot you know and janice just passed yeah. it for me right i didn't have to do any mm. manual work i just said okay let's set up that layer let's set up the, you know just made the layers and then yeah. just it just out with the uh, um, and then we had a tool that actually could um uh, send all if you had more than one scene file to send to the render farm, we had a tool that yeah. actually batch processed that as well. Oh, that's great. Uh, so we just, okay, here's a, here's the folder where, where we'll have all these render scene files that needs to go to the render farm. It just, okay, just, and then they just t took it and dumped it and put it in the correct folder structure uh, in the render farm software and, and stuff like that. Yeah, it was a great time. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was super fun, actually. Reminds me, it sounds like uh, Max is because uh, scene states and its render pass system was, you know, a blast to use as far as accessibility yeah. and like, especially the scene states were wonderful because we would have, you know, these scenes built for V-Ray, right? With V-Ray specific mm, yeah. materials mm. and things. And you can actually have a scene state that turns them to standard materials. So when you're rendering, because we used to do uh, cheats, like we used to... Uh, to make rendering go faster, even back then, when you did anything with blurry reflections, you know, it can be like, Ugh, oh, yeah, I'm slow. <laughs> <laughs> so, in V Ray, it's like, this is too slow, right? Like, we so uh, imagine you have a team, right, of people, and and we we kind of were at least the way I made my team work, we kind of had our individual people that were really good at modeling and good at this, good at down a pipeline right that's their kind of main thing but everyone kind of had to be good at all of it in some ways too 
if we needed help. Um, but sometimes like, we would have artists like develop something. All right, you're gonna need to develop this this shot that's gonna be for this game, but it's gonna be this huge long animation. But he would develop it, and then we would uh, review it, and it would be a nice pretty V-Ray render. And he'd be like, oh, this render was 45 minutes long. I'm like, all right. We have to do 10,000 frames of this. <laughs> we don't want 45 minutes of frame. So I had this amazing uh, guy on my team, uh, Carlos, who would uh, basically, I'm like, Carlos, you're up to bat now. I want you to deconstruct the scene to make it look like the V-Ray render, but go ahead and, you know, use your magic to knock it down to five minutes of frame. <laughs> oh, wow. And we, we would do those things and, and we could do that in Max pretty nicely. It's like we would get rid of the blurry reflections that V-Ray would take forever long to do. And we would do this, the standard, you know, Fong shading specular pass mm -hmm. and, and, and a standard render material. And then we would just soften it in post to kind of oh, give yeah. it that soft look. So it's not so harsh just to give us the same look so we can get down to that five minute per frame thing because you know you don't you don't want to tell you know the studio that you're making this shot for like yeah well we'll give you your render uh three years from now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it's coming i mean uh yeah that's so funny with render times i remember i, I think it was the lord of the rings the, the two towers when they had to do tree beard and there were some oh. some frames there that could take up to 48 hours per frame. 48 yeah, hours I, I, for I one it. frame. Yeah. But but then again, they, they had like a huge render from several thousand of CPUs, right? So it didn't matter too much, I guess, for them. But if you if you have a limited render farm, or maybe not even have oh, a yeah. render farm, then then you are you, you have to be smart about how you do things. Yeah, we, we had to, because all our uh, unlike movie companies. Or even video game studios so in the gaming world when you work on these games and and they were big like, you know we had the battleship game top gun so you have these big license we had lord of the rings as an ip uh you don't get that same amount of time no <laughs> no we, our games are like three to six months uh turnaround time oh shit that, that's very low it's low you know yeah. and it's you know besides the gameplay and, and remember it's all programming based stuff too so it's not just you know you're not just rendering out a sequence yeah sometimes it has to work within a sequence of events for their programmers especially when we did the real-time stuff um yeah. so you're really you know just like if it was a tv production like you have to be really smart about your your rendering and, and we used to like the lord of the rings games they were called participation games if you're if you ever go to vegas the games that look bigger, larger than life in there that all usually all have IPs associated with them. Um, they're the real big ones in the casinos. And like on say the battleship game, they tethered. So it's imagine a bank of like, I don't know, maybe it's like six to eight casino games at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And there'd be two large 1080 screen, 1080 piece screens tethered together. Then now you're rendering this, this massive sequence of images on these screens that are together you know all running on its own you know uh pc behind the scenes so you're running gameplay up there you're running these huge big attract sequences so we had to be really <laughs> smart but make it look as visually uh, pleasing as possible mm. like mm -hmm. in the yeah. demo that i sent uh, the battleship one was that was a real fun you know because occasionally we did get to make these attracts right these are these big attracts that would appear over the the game machines to get people to come play um, oh, wow. So lot, lots of fun because you really got to do everything. You got to be like this production studio t for TV film, building these huge sequences. You got to do the gameplay stuff, like the the Iron Man one that's in there where I used the hypervoxels for the clouds. Mm. That That's him just as an attract. He's just kind of floating there and flying towards the screen. And then when he interacts with the bottom screen, he'll put his air brakes on, shoot down, and then it goes to the bottom screen and affects the reels and stuff like that. And then phew, goes back to his track again. And oh, then there's wow. meters around him usually and the, the logo. So it's re real fun. It's real fun to problem solve all this stuff and, mm. and then do work on IPs like that. Uh, like Lord of the Rings, we got disc. I think like it was like a size of their, you know, color Bible that they give you. They give, they sent a bunch of disc, uh, especially for the first one. The files aren't very, man, 
movie studios, you think they would be a little bit more organized with their <laughs> <laughs> their assets, and they're, they're not. <laughs> like the file, like you've, we had some Maya files and you'd open it and, you know, it'd be like the cool, I forgot what Lord of the Ring character it was, but you look at its uh, hierarchy and it'd be like, oh, box one through box 500. How nice. Oh God. That's what they started with. It would just be the box one, two, three, four. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the details on the bottom of this guy's shoe here. How oh. How lovely they renamed it for us. Oh, God. <laughs> Having to do that, if you get someone else's production files, if they oh. don't have the same production style that you have or, or naming conventions, it's a nightmare to, to sort it's of... It's a nightmare. Uh, yeah, to just... Which actually makes Lightwave even uh, kind of a cooler tool. I always loved the fact that it kind of forced the structure. Oh, yeah, true. Right? It, it, yeah. I mean, it technically doesn't, but... It, when you have it, it plays really nice. When you have your um, uh, object folder, t image folder, yeah. render folder, like it, it's 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 like oh, it understands this because we we had that issue with like Max didn't have that. So if you were an artist working in Max and you didn't care, it would put everything on your C username. Uh, you know, not even in a subfolder, just the texture. Like imagine your C whatever windows having just a bunch of crap everywhere. It's like, this is ridiculous, you know, so it didn't have a nice clean system and Lightwave has always kind of had that. Oh, uh, and, and a, a very saving grace because we, we had this freelancer working for us uh, uh, one yeah. time, uh, or he, he actually, he moved, um, he, he worked, started working freelance and then he, moved to Sweden and, and became a part of our team. But when he's sort of, he's sort of, he's a very talented artist, but he's not very organized. So he puts everything in, in the same folder. He doesn't use the Lightweight file structure, even though he's a Lightweight okay. user. So he puts everything in a folder on desktop or something like that. And, you know, the, everything is in one folder. And he could send that to me. And I was like, oh, God, how do I figure this out? <laughs> Package. And, yeah. And then what, what, what uh, and then I told him, hey, load the scene file that you want to send me. Okay. So he loaded that. And then I said, and then I said to told him, use this tool called Package Scene. Yeah, Make yep, a sip yep. out of it. And then I got exactly what I needed, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah, pack, yeah. package scene is such a good uh, tool for sharing oh, with yeah. others. It, yeah. It's phenomenal. Yeah, it, it's a it's a god save. You know, I think my favorite though, uh, you guys, I don't know if you use After Effects. I do like how After Effects is pretty good at uh, parsing assets. Like once you find the one asset, it was in, if the other assets are in that folder, it just finds them. I kind of wish Lightway would do that. I don't, I don't know if, if they can start like to scan and just to see instead of asking you if if you did lose things and you had to open up someone's file and it's like, where's this? Where's this? Where's this? It's oh, in yeah. the same spot as the other one. <laughs> yeah. Layout and Modeler. Layout and Modeler. Layout and Modeler have different code for that. I'm pretty sure. Because I've got like, yeah. where I load it fine in Layout and then I load it in Modeler and it's like, where are these images? And I'm like, but Layout knows where they are. So they're, they're, they're yeah. the right. Uh, yeah, but it needs to be Something needs to be fixed there. I think because, you know, everyone, I mean, if you're, if you're starting in Lightwave and you're going to start modeling, you start in Modeler. But Modeler doesn't start with the folder structure. It kind of yeah. needs that. You almost have to open up uh, Layout first, make its folder structure, and then go to Modeler. So, the, but they need to kind of a little like the other reverse because I've had that happen too. Like, like what? What? Layout knows where it's at. <laughs> Come yeah. on, Modeler. You know, because you know how Layout will ask you, "Hey, do you want to use this as your directory structure?" Mm. Yes, I do. Yeah. Uh, and L Modeler doesn't really. You don't start that way. Like when I open Modeler, I'm not even thinking about the structure. I think about it when I'm ready to save that model. I'm like, oh, I should save it. And I, I usually end up just making new folder objects, images. Oh, even yeah. though I know in layout, they have the button that makes it for you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? But they, <clears throat> they should have that button in Modeler somewhere. Make the structure. Mm, yeah. That'd be kind of cool. That's true. Yeah. All right. Lightwave Digital. Good, good point. Yeah, we'll, t we'll tell them. I'll, I'll get on. I'll get on Skype hey. tonight and tell them. Yeah, <laughs> that should be pretty easy to make if you just say. Yeah. Or maybe when you save the object or something, it says, "Do you want me to make the structure?" The folder here? structure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Fill the folders. That's actually a good cool. idea. Yeah, yeah I do. I do know idea. that uh, Giles at least he listened to this podcast. So. <laughs> so. 
We'll, we'll get one of them. Yeah. Nice we'll get one of them. I'll, t- I'll just tell Andy when I'm on the phone with him next. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Next time you're yeah. going to talk to Andy, you got to uh, have him uh, reach out to me about that uh, laser etching stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm trying to get on the Lightwave store with my. See, I was going to hang the sign, but I didn't have time before, so I can make cool. Oh, Lightwave! Cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Light, and the tum, the tumblers with the little Lightwave logo on it, but nice things. Not that the coffee mug's not nice, but laser etch with the stainless steel and the Lightwave mm. logo etched to the metal looks cool. Oh, true. So, I know. I know. I gave one to Chuck. And this is when they were at New Tech, and I gave one to uh, Deuce because Deuce is not too far from me. He's uh, near Dallas, and I'm in Austin. Oh yeah, yeah, nice. true, true, nice, nice. I'll phone him up and tell yeah. him you've got his phone number. I'm sure you. <laughs> Just tell I, him. I, I, I nag him sometimes, but I, but, I, I, but uh, on Discord, I you know I talk uh, Andrew Bishop. Um, you know he he got back to me before like the holidays, but then I'm assuming he just got busy. He was going to get me in touch with whoever does the marketing side for the store i'm like Meh, but i haven't heard from him <laughs> i think i know who that is so i will yeah reach out. yeah I'd love to be i will i just i i'd be mean to be actually phoning up andrew but i've, I've had a bout of illness and so i haven't been very ah. available <sighs> which we'll not go into but uh yes i i need to get back in touch with him about some stuff so i shall cool from my trying to remember and, and nag him but you know actually one of the things that i really love about the team is it's i mean it's even before you know before this all happened with the big the big collapse and everything you know you can still just like message them and they will get back to you if you you know they're, they're really friendly nice bunch yeah mm. yeah i usually message you um, message andrew and and same thing with deuce like when they had a little debacle there with the serial numbers or the user something was oh yeah but mm. deuce got back to me and it was pretty quick so, yeah, just just message yeah, them and I, be like, "Oh yeah, see what you mean. We'll fix it." Yeah, it's done. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's 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 what a wonderful surprise, right? It was about this time last year that we got that. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, that's Wait. true. Yeah, and you know, uh, like yeah. it would never die. Never <laughs> ever goes away. Uh, it's, it's, as much it's, as those other it's, 3D it's, companies want us to. It's, well, it's, well it's since that's good. an impromptu question, sorry, uh, I don't want to talk over you there. Impromptu question then. Were you genuinely surprised when Lightwave came back? I don't know if you were keeping track of it or pe- following people or, you know, were, did you go, what? You know, because obviously you're a long time user, love the software. Was it a genuine shock to you or did you did you hear rumors or what? Uh, no, no, no rumor. I mean, most of my rumors, if I had got anything, would have been from from Deuce anyways. But our, mm. one of the last conversations we had uh, when I went to go see him, and I'm sure it doesn't really matter if I said he, he didn't really specify, but when they were at BizRT, it sounded like there were three paths, three paths that were going to happen. And he was hoping for one of them. And my guess that was leaving BizRT <laughs> and separating, uh, but it didn't happen and it kind of collapsed. And then I'm like, oh, you know, or maybe, you know, I'm, sur- I'm assuming that pass he was meaning was like, yay, we're going to disconnect from BizRT somehow. Um, and then it did go quiet for a while. And I know Kat, uh, I know he, what's his, uh, what's his real name? Kelly, Kelly Myers. Myers. Yes. Kelly, Kelly Myers, that he was, uh, hunting them down the new tech, like going to the trade shows at NAB and going oh, here, what, give me light wave. I want to know. <laughs> so, I mean, I remember that on Facebook for a while. Uh, <laughs> and I forget who was in talks as well. There was someone else in talks at that time. Uh, with VizRT. I, I think so there were a few people were, approached. Yeah, a yeah. few people. I know if I, I had said this, I think on one of those uh, Facebook forums, if I said, if I had one, you know, millions and millions of dollars that year, I would just take it off their hands because, you know, it's not, it's silly just sitting there. And, and their, their whole, you know, uh, thing on the, um, what is it, on their... What do they put on on the new tech forums where they said the the answering question right like VizRT doesn't talk about their technology blah 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 it's like oh come on yeah <laughs> you got you know why don't you just say you're not doing anything with it or say you're finally trying to find another suitor for it that would have been nicer mm-hmm. I mean yeah. I'm glad it it happened uh, yes. so I was I was uh, I was surprised I wasn't expecting it to you know it was always that hope right you're like. I hope someone finds it because the, of those rumors. 
Mm, yeah. Um, but you can only take them with a grain of salt. And uh, Andrew Bishop, I mean, that, that's awesome. That What a great guy to get it. I, I remember going to um, SIGGRAPH way back in the day and seeing him talk about, um, what was that plugin? He was on the New Techs booth, and he was talking about, uh, it's that one where you can make like the forest and ecosystems. Oh, Vu, Vu. V, v, Vu, Vu, that's right, yeah, Vu. Vu. Yeah. And he was on the New Tech stage talking about that and how he uses it with Lightwave and talking about the render engine at that time of Lightwave. And it was like, oh, that's so cool. Because I've, I've met him, uh, you know, a few times throughout the years at those shows or see the people at the New Tech booth, which was cool. Um, that's what a great... I like when the users are the people who end up running the show. Even Rob yes. Powers. I, I liked Rob Powers as far as his, uh, I mean, back then the trade shows were really cool. Mm, uh, yeah. It was neat stuff he was doing with Lightwave. I mean, the whole avatar thing, like remember when I, he showed up? And he, that like that's that's oh, that's cool. Like I didn't expect that. Yeah, <laughs> you know? that's true. Yeah. So, I mean, it's unfortunate the mismanagement of whatever it went, but uh, New Tech's pretty. Good. They were known for that. So, <laughs> <laughs> quite a fun show. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if I they think, I think that, definitely. Would you watch it, that on? <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, I, I was would, gonna, would you watch that on TV? I would watch that on TV. Like oh, if they, yeah, if, yeah, like if they filmed the, the all the drama, new tech stuff. Yeah. <laughs> all right, go ahead, weird. No, no, I was just going to say, I mean, I, I definitely agree. I think there was a, a sheen of professionalism that came out when Rob Powers took over that made it look like a shiny new company. It just all felt the bits, didn't it, towards the end of his era. Um, and that was yeah, a real I, shame. I never understood why they would disappear. Like, everyone was crying. Like, come on, give us something. I mean, we went from, what, 2016 to 2017 to 2018. Was it 2019 then? I, it was like, wow, it was such a long delay for a, a release. It, it was complicated, and I'm not going to get into it because I'm not really allowed. But it was very yeah, frustrating. Now. It doesn't matter now. Uh, I still don't want to say it. it. But the, I don't know whether you've seen it. Yeah, because uh, I don't know whether you've seen it, but I did a demo, a live demo of like with 2016 uh, in Mansfield. Not, not Mansfield, Ohio, Mansfield, England. Uh, and that was recorded and it was put out there. Um, and everybody was like, getting really excited about it. And then it never, it just didn't get released. I mean, you remember one of the I things I was I really... see that. One of the things I was really frustrated about was at the time, uh, we were the first on that I was aware of, of all of the major software to have the Disney material shader, the principal BSDF. And yeah. I, it was it was ready. It was all done in like with 2016 time-ish. And then everybody else started putting it in and I'm like, oh, we've already got it. I was showing it on the live <laughs> we first. We were first. And, it, and again, it was another first. Yeah, like, like HDRI and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And then by the time like with 2008, scene eventually came out it was like it wasn't even that exciting as like, oh, we've already had that in blender for two years i'm like yeah we had it before you <laughs> <laughs> yeah i, I was saying, using I mean, it they had all those wonderful uh little moments on the oh, why can't i remember the name uh, uh not the lightweight form it was the uh where they would rob powers would have the little articles what do they call that oh the blog the blog oh, man, that name just all right, in the blog, and it was great to see. Like you, we would get, he was, he was. They were cooking, like they were having updates, like monthly, and then it would just. It was it just, just a went. strange, and it didn't yeah. even make sense because it looked like there was enough there to even probably get it released. At least even from what you're saying, which like, what I don't know what they were waiting for. And I know towards the end too, they were, they were trying to get the octane rendered. That's what I uh, heard, and then that fell through, and it's like, oh. So it was just uh, yeah, I, I don't, I still don't understand what 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 was the delay. Even if it had some bugs in it, I mean, just release it, and that's what they do. Every, now everyone does that, right? Games get released with tons of bugs, and they patch it, patch it, patch it. So <laughs> you know, maybe they could have fixed some of those bugs quicker, like the uh, rendering uh, secondary cache bug and all those things. Mm -hmm. Those things do do even to this day. I don't think it works properly. I've tested it on a few, 
interior design job and it's like why is it just sitting here on this one little you know spot on the render <laughs> never gets past it wow so yeah yeah there's also so, yeah. there's also this uh anti-aliasing you know uh, bug as well because uh yeah, yeah, yeah with, with the the minimum maximum samples on the camera uh, oh, it, it doesn't actually doesn't make it. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, right now it's much better. <laughs> it's actually much faster to just put in brute force numbers. So don't use adaptive oh, yeah. sampling. It's the adaptive sampling bug, I would say, because just just put in the brute force and it's actually going to be faster. And uh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I, yeah, I haven't. Uh, I mean, I just did use the Lightwave 2023 render on my little donut tutorial, uh, um, but. Um, you know, I haven't really used the, I only use the native renderer. Uh, I use Octane more, I would say mm -hmm. now than, than the native render. Only if I need some quick testing, I'll use the standard lightweight one because it can still be pretty and pretty quick. Um, but yeah, Octane is just quicker and prettier out the gate as far as quick, the quickness. I mean, VPI, yeah. I love it. I, I, I really want, um, you know, I, I don't know if they'll, just change over to GPU. I think I kind of think they should. I, I, when you, I don't know if you the way you guys acted, but when they first talked about the new render engine, you know, I was excited, but I was actually also upset that they got rid of the old one because oh, yeah. um, because in my this is my opinion. I think of it like especially coming from the Max. Max kept every render engine. Like we we worked in the standard render engine. We worked in Mental Ray. Uh, V-Ray well, obviously was a plugin, so they always had render engines, but you could always just flip between the different types, and some of them could mix. Like V-Ray could render the standard shaders, mm. you know, if you didn't want anything fancy, it could it could render it fine. You didn't even have to switch to a V-Ray camera; you can even use the standard camera with the V-Ray render engine. So it's kind kind of a nice little mix. Obviously, if you use the V-Ray camera, and you know your images will look prettier. Um, but I thought it would be kind of cool because I, what I thought, and maybe it didn't happen is I thought they said that the render engine was going to be plugin based, even the new one. So I, I had thought yeah, that they were going to have like the old one still in there and you just more or less pick and choose which one you want to work on. Maybe you can't mix the two, but that's what I thought. I thought it was going to be more plugin. Like, oh, that's cool. That way, we were, then I'm thinking, oh, V-Ray is going to be a plugin now, and Octane, and all these render engines would just flood in to the Lightwave market because it's all plugin based. Uh, what I do know is that the the uh, the GI portion of the new render engine is a plugin based, so you can write okay. your own GI solutions for it. But yeah, not the shaders. No. Uh, um, yeah, there's a number of reasons why that probably wouldn't have worked. Uh, but the main one is is that when they moved over to 2018 rendering engine, they made it in native again instead of leaving it as a plugin, which it used to be, which is stupid. But unfortunately, that's kind of done. They could separate it out again, I guess, if they really wanted to. Um, it would still be a nightmare to try and integrate the two because it would be like kind of like, so you've got a light. And a light yeah. in, in 2015 and a light in 2018, the light, it's a square, and that's about as much as they've got in common. And that would be the problem. <laughs> it would be like, it would, the way in which it would emit light is differently calculated. And so you would have the same controls, but it would look radically different between the two rendering engines. Also, the pipeline in terms of the materials works radically different between 2015 and 2018. The, way in, the, the point in the renderer that it's sort of processed. So uh, I think it would probably be way more of a headache for them for, for now. I mean, at the time, if they'd done it that way, fine. But it, yeah. they, weren't, they weren't compatible. Um, I mean, like, makes sense. Makes sense. I mean, I, I get it, but I also like coming from, like I said, from multi pipelines. Like, either maybe it's the way Max got programmed that maybe their their thing is either smart enough to understand that. Like, even if, it, like I said, if it, imagine Lightwave opening up at that time, I remember I think I was I was on the beta. Like, why don't we just add it back? <laughs> Because I, I really, what I appreciated about that, like when we, especially went to V-Ray, right, that we can actually do these little cheats 
uh, and now when you, when you're, when you're bound to, you know, even though, I mean, now it doesn't matter, right? Render engines are super fast. So, but back then when you had to worry about like, let me just use a, a Fong based shading, uh, specular mm. highlight versus, uh, everything being real, you know, I, that option was just nice to have that I could kind of blend the V-Ray and, uh, you know, faster render engine. Cause if you, even if you see, like, I would say, and I'm sure you guys would agree, VPR refresh rate before the new, uh, render engine got in there was, was so much faster resolving wise. So oh, yeah. hopefully they just get, get it to be as, as good as that was. Yeah. I, I just, I just worked around it and I bought a, uh, the Threadripper 128 thread computer. <laughs> so. <laughs> that, that is a solution. That is a solution. Um, you can. A wonderful solution. Um, one of the reasons why VPR was so much faster, actually, is it's a little bit of a cheat. Is that it only yeah. did um, three bounce rays maximum. Ah, uh, I see. Mm, okay. And so, so, like for example, like you, I remember trying this and noticed the flaw, but it's not yeah. only shows up in certain circumstances. Made a functional eye. As a test, not, you know, constantly just doing, I make a functional eye. <laughs> when you've got the multiple la layers of, of glass, you know, the, you know, the, the different layers oh, of yeah, the material sure. inside the eye. And it just didn't work. Uh-huh. Because the refraction was only doing like a couple of bounces and then it killed the ray. I see. And there was no amount of tweaking that would make it do more so they had hard clamped the and so it's like for for a lot of scenes very basic scenes it's absolutely fine and you would not notice it but of course me being me going right this is completely <laughs> broken i've got a like say an arch -vis scenario where you've got a window and it's yeah. got a real refraction and then you can't see the room beyond that's right I Which thought that was the, the draft mode buttons, right? Was it draft mode or something? No, there was, reflections? there was a draft mode which made it worse. Yeah. Um, but there was a hard limit where you could only get it to do, say, you'd have a window and then another window, for example, and it was the second like iteration, it would just fail. And ah, so, I see. And, and nothing you could do. It was just like, right, I have to do a full render, and then that was slower. Um, <laughs> so there are there were a number of hard kind of programmed things. Um, and I think the other main problem with the, the, the new renderer, as you were, it's this anti-aliasing bug. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like, we didn't figure it out until like about midway through Lightwave 2018 when we're like, hang on a minute, this has gone horribly wrong. What is going wrong here? And we kind of did a lot of testing and it was just right before 2000, 2019 was being launched. And it was like, oh I no. See. And it was, it was a big <laughs> problem to fix. And, and I think they're still struggling with it now. Huh. Mm. No one knows the reason yet. Yeah, I hope they figure it out. Yeah, it, but, I, I, it's not a question of whether they know the reason. They just that's how they fix it. Um, hmm. That should make the renderer go faster if they can fix that. Would, if they can fix that, it'll make a huge difference to everything because VPR on the render is the same rendering engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. True. Which that was a difference too, right? The, in previous <clears throat> versions, the VPR was not what you render. No, it wasn't what you render. Whereas this version, it's the exact same rendering engine. Um, it's for mm. certain scenes it's it is lightning fast it's just that in certain scenarios it's uh as we know uh this this would make a big difference it would rapidly it would you know massively speed up the way that vpr worked as well as the rendering engine because it's the exact same rendering engine yeah that's cool um well, hopefully they can get that. to the bottom of it and, and, and solve it. It's it's a very, very hard maths sum problem that um the rough is struggling with. <laughs> <laughs> There's some smart guys out there. I'm sure they'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're when they release guys. it, everyone, everyone's going to be cheering. So, yay. <laughs> I mean, just look at Elmar's, uh, Elmar's, uh, what did he, uh, Volumetic. Do you remember that one? Oh, yes. yes I remember that. I, I was drooling over that plugin and I didn't, I didn't even have a use for it. I'm like, that's so cool. <laughs> yeah, it is. And so, I mean, he is the, 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 is it the head of development right now, right? I don't. I don't exactly know what Elmar does. I just know that he does a lot. Bless him. Um, but I don't. I don't know his official role. Yeah, he's 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 got a really well. He's he's actually the. I mean, we should get him on as a guest because I know a little bit pieces, but not exactly what he does day to day. But 
but uh, well, yeah, he's so busy. <laughs> he's so busy. Um, but he originally was one of the, he was the lead developer in Lightwave two thousand and eight, which is why oh, yeah. he already knows a lot about how Lightwave works internally and its internal data structures and how you know he's he's by no means an expert on everything. So he's still going to struggle at certain things where he doesn't know. But he's a really talented uh, programmer and he knows an awful lot about Lightwave because he was actually the, the lead developer in the two thousand and eight. Yeah, era. essentially. That's cool. Essentially, yeah. every, everything you see in Lightwave 9 was essentially his plan. But he yeah. he left because it was Jay Roth, I think, and Jonas that came in and actually just uh. executed what he had planned. Lightwave, yeah. 9, uh. Lightwave 9 is one of the, you know, one of the, one of those updates where like, oh my God, they, they put so much stuff in there, you know. Uh, Lightwave motion. 9 was the probably the best version of lightwave ever wasn't it like in <clears throat> terms of the amount yes. of free plugin stuff you got the amount of extra features mm. uh it was also when f prime was still in its, its king of the you know yeah. so you king of the rendering from, mm -hmm. so yeah. you had you had f prime and then you got nodes which was new and exciting and everybody's like whoa what's all this um so powerful um yeah. Like like with ten, it, it, relatively speaking, was a bit of a damp squib. It's just that it had a couple of features that were that come across from core. Um, yeah, core. Yeah, core. Core was a good time for a little bit there, and I mean, until until you you know used it. I, I remember watching that uh, reveal video and mm. being super excited about it. Although you know, everyone, I'm sure everyone thought they were a lot longer than they said they were. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, you know, the whole node-based thing was kind of cool. But man, the fact that they though used like Maya, you know, keyboard shortcuts. So like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember some, some silly uh, ideas there. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually set up uh, when when we talk about core. I actually set up a core FTP for because it was. Uh, I think it was Lewis, you know, the modeling guy. Yeah. Uh, he yes. he used that FTP a lot to, because then uh, he actually made videos of core, you know, telling them this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is what you need to do, blah 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 blah, and he had like ten ten videos or something like that, hour long videos that the developers <laughs> then downloaded from my FTP. <laughs> Uh, so that That's they could cool. watch, yeah, yeah I, I sort of set up a a flow there so they could actually, you know, communicate properly. Um, but yeah, at the end, I mean, the core actually was really good because back, yeah. you know, because it, it started to feel more like Lightwave, but a yeah. more modernized yeah, version Yeah, yeah, it started it. getting there. It was pretty powerful. And I remember the, I went to SIGGRAPH. What's Rob oh. Powers? I think Rob Powers was on and they were still developing core for a little bit there. And he had that uh, cool scene in OpenGL with the mm -hmm. refractions and yeah. Yeah. Uh, VPR. It was like, oh, this is great. Um, but, you know, obviously it must have not. It was really cr crashy. And I remember, remember uh, Jay Roth did this little tutorial with the uh, with the TV show, The Phone Booth. Um, Oh yeah, uh, yeah, Doctor Who thing. Doctor Who's yeah, phone booth, uh, time machine. It's like, all right, this, <laughs> this is. A, I guess it's a good starting. Maybe my donut tutorials. I shouldn't talk. I had to just. I just did a donut tutorial. <laughs> but anyways, <laughs> I was like, come on, you know. It's like, uh, yeah, it's a very unfortunate that. I mean, I'm glad Lightwave Ten was kind of neat that they did get to bring over some cool features. Mm, um, yeah. But yeah, I always wondered, like, man, what if, what if they somewhere in the background had to continue that? <laughs> yeah, because I, yeah, that, that's the, that's that's the thing. Like, with ten was released, uh, and you got Core as well as a sort of support software because in Core they actually had Bullet implemented. Yeah, yeah. Bullet. Yeah. And then I was thinking, uh, because uh, I love, uh, I mean, I'm a, like I said, a big whore when it comes to plugins. I've mm. used everything from like the Puppet Master back in the day for animation oh, yeah. to, you know, like uh, Lightwave CAD. I love Lightwave CAD. Um, so like, I remember when that, I'm like, oh, he's going to build Lightwave CAD for core. How cool is that? You know, I can't wait to see yeah. what, what gets ported that way, you know? Um, but I see how it became messy too for plugin writers and users yeah. and and then studios that were using the pipeline looks like everyone just started jumping ship because yeah. I was like yeah. what so yeah, i wish true. they would have just said hey we're gonna build this on the side 
and we'll keep upgrading the normal light wave until we can mm, I, don't know. I really don't know like like moto you know moto like moto took what was it version seven or eight before they even got animation a long long time yeah oh true yeah yeah and even so, then it was a bit of a mess compared to other it wasn't great yeah yeah so sometimes you just gotta keep the status quo <laughs> I think once Modo jumped the track from being a modeler to being not a modeler is the, the point at which Modo started falling down, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Probably because it became too heavy. It's just too too many functions, too many things in a UI which was never really meant to support it. And so they had the same problem that all software has. It's just like, this too much. It's just... Uh... It's definitely... And I actually heard, I don't know if it's true or not, that they had built built it off the model modelers engine i'm not sure if that is true i don't know if it's from scratch I, but i can see I, like well if they had did that 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 was probably your first mistake <laughs> i think i don't know if they built it off the engine but like i remember things like boolean had the exact same error code it's like oh, yeah. someone's done a bit of copying and pasting here <laughs> even if they've subsequently moved on they did clearly do a bit of copying and pasting i mean the guy owned the code i mean it was his code too. yeah yeah i remember an article in 3d artists where where i was actually excited about it at one time because uh um they were talking about they said that oh no uh Lightwave is going to have, was it a mo? They were making Moto for Lightwave, like it was going to have two mommies, or I forget what it was. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it was like, oh, cool, they're making a new modeler, and then somehow that's going to be working with layout or something. I think it was like a small little article in one of the 3D artist magazines. I'm like, oh, that's neat when they first mentioned the new modeler, but then, you know, they had their falling out, and the rest is history. Man, like yeah. I said, Lightwave would be a great reality TV show. <laughs> <laughs> so much drama. Oh, yeah. So much drama, yeah. Maybe we should write a script. <laughs> Sell it to Hollywood. Like, hey, yeah. guys. I, I, um, I, a bunch of nerds would watch it, that show. Come we on. would. Well, we would. I mean, I've, I, I know bits. I mean, wasn't was it the Juice interview where, where he was yeah. describing the, the when he started his first day at, at New Tech was when the entire company had fallen to bits and it was just crazy and he was like, what is going on? It was yeah. like the, the Modo guys had just walked out. Yeah, more and or less. Just, I, and I'm customer support now. What? <laughs> did, did they join in a ba at a bad time? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like that uh, movie uh, with uh, Fun with Dick and Jane. Did you ever see that movie? No? Uh, what Which one? Uh, what, what, what? Uh, fun with Dick and Fun with Dick and Jane. It's a movie I've heard with of um, it. Uh, Brad Pitt. Uh, who is stars this? in it? No, it's not Brad Pitt. It's uh, uh, that silly guy. Uh, he he play, he's in Liar Liar. He's in the oh, Sonic um, movies. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I know. Yes. I know yes. which one you're talking about, the uh, actor. I've gone blank. Yeah, I know who you mean. Uh, mask movie. Um, yeah, Mask. So it's a funny It's a funny movie where he joins his company. But it was like the Enron time when then he became the fallout person and the company, like they're burning files in a garbage can and the whole company is trying to hide their, their numbers <laughs> and their stocks crashing. And he's like, yeah, what? yeah. He's trying to, and he's just his first day on the job. <laughs> well, wasn't he in the Truman Show as well, right? Truman Show, that's right. Yeah. Yes. God, what, he oh, seems well, such a recognizable name. name. Why? It is. I, I've got blank. Jim, Jim Carrey. Jim, Jim Carrey. Carrey. Yes. yes. Jim Carrey. Sorry, Thank sorry you. Jim. I know you watch this. <laughs> Obviously. We didn't mean to forget about you. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's, he's also, I think, uh, talking about him. It was one of the movies. He actually asked uh, one of the sort of a hardcore death metal bands to actually be be the band that plays in, uh, in, a, in a club. Because he, <laughs> I think he had watched a concert or something and he sort of loved the energy of it or something he doesn't like the music uh -huh. but he just loved the energy of it and he actually had yeah. had uh, one of those death metal bands play live in a, <laughs> in, a, in one of the scenes in, in a movie i can't remember oh, which that's movie cool it was. yeah that is cool uh, that's fun to to put some death metal in, into people's minds <laughs> he's gonna uh, want some light wave 2023 in his next movie so you know, he, do, he does yeah <laughs> Hey guys, I saw your I saw your show. I loved it. 
I want you to be part of my next movie. All right. Yeah, I love that bit where you couldn't remember my name for 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on me. Huh? Uh, yeah. But yeah, cool. let's, so moving on with the interview a little bit here. What, what makes you come back to Lightwave as a solution to, to the problems you face in production? Uh, I've heard this in uh, other interviews. I, I, it's two things, right? It is definitely muscle memory, right? When you when you know something, especially for as long as we've known it, <laughs> uh, you just you just gravitate towards it, and it's easy. And like I said, I I always manage to find it uh, to be used in multiple pipelines because it is what I know, right? And it it I can just get things done super fast. It is easy compared to what people think and, I, and i've used max and maxes and it's got its everything has its love and hate right with 3d softwares mm, absolutely um and i'm not sure you know i'm sure if someone did something in maya or max because lightwave used to tell like hey it's the fastest you can be faster if i use our software yeah you know i i think if the, the artist is talented they'll be fast in whatever they end up using uh but one thing i always did like about it uh, which I can, you know, also also have that hate is the fact that modeler and layout is separate. But I never mm. understood the big deal, uh, especially working in a mo like like you, Cageman. You, we we work in multiple uh, studio kind of pipelines. Yeah. Like what did what did people think? What, what, what was ZBrush? Is ZBrush yeah, yeah. tied to Max? No. What well, is my Unity render engine tied to? Maya, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is that real? Yeah. You know, so it's like I'm confused. Like, modeler being separate, it just works. And what is the saving grace about it is really that's its thing. That's all you can really do in it. You, yeah, yeah. you can texture it, but you're not you're not going to be distracted by your timeline. You're not going to be distracted by, you know. Like like in Max, you can accidentally hit something, right? <laughs> now you're modeling and you, oh my God, I just keyframe and animated all my vertices. Great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, how did I do that? I yeah. hit that stupid record button or lock button or whatever. It's like, dang it. So, you know, <laughs> it's kind of neat when you're in modeler and you're just focused on polygon modeling. Now, would I want modeler to see updates? Yeah, I would love to see it. Um you know, continue to, to, I don't know, maybe more polygons, maybe some type of sculpting that would be cool because you do look at tools like Blender and you see some really cool stuff doing it. It's got a nice sculpting tool. I saw, watch mm. this guy on uh, YouTube. I don't remember his name, but he, he was a ZBrush artist and now he uses Blender and, and mm. it's just fun to watch him. It's very relaxing you know, watching him just sculpt something. Uh, and uh, that looks pretty neat. Then I'm like, oh, I should mess with that. I mean, I have 3D code. There's a lot of sculptors out there as well. But yeah, I, don't, I think, uh, I don't know why people didn't like that. Like, oh, modeler's ancient. It's old. It's separate. Like, well, do you work in ZBrush? Yeah. Okay. Do you work in Unreal? Yeah. Are those separate? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I so. think I think uh, uh, what what people usually refer to when it comes to, to the separation is that you can't really, a layout doesn't actually know what a polygon in is. Layout doesn't mm. know what a vertex is. It only knows yeah. about objects, but that is a layout problem, not really a modeling problem per se. So, yeah. Uh, so, and I, I, for one, do want them in layout to, like the new tools they just added. The nodes are nice, but they're not. They're not a modeling workflow that would be no. easy by any no, means. No, no, no. So I, I do want them to have like, like I really the I always. Even back in the day when I was on beta, I would say, hey, we should have like some type of edit poly tool under the object properties. It's something mm. that gives you the, just like the edit mesh or edit poly in Max, which is quite simple. It, it has its selections and it has its, uh, you know, extrude and bevel, real, real basic tools, doesn't need a lot. You know, they, and even in uh, Max, they eventually added those pro, pro modeling tools that was a plugin and they, they inserted them. And it gets a little bit more convoluted with those more like i would say more like modeler there's a lot more buttons to look through now <laughs> yeah <laughs> but there's the but just the foundation right bevel extrude uh edges vertices and polys mm. so i think if you start with that and isolation mode i mean i in my dream world of course i would want a modeler kind of interface and layout i love the little mm. layer buttons i like the layer panel you know you because you gotta want that feel like you're in there but 
you know, I, hopefully they get some type of editing. But I get, I get the headaches too, right? Because like, all right, now I, do I save this as a new format of an object? Is it now a third yeah. format? Do I need a, if I started in Lightwave object, brought it in there, added it, is it more of an editing thing, like a live mm. thing? Which probably what it would be, right? But does that cause any issues, like like fiber effects? <laughs> I don't know. So I, I can I see some main... headaches. I yeah. think the main reason why I, I would like it to more merged, uh, however they do that, in you know, put layout stuff in modeler or modeler stuff in layout, you know, and then eventually merge. I don't know how they're going to do it. But the main thing that for me, the killer, the thing that I would absolutely love for it is instances in modeler. Oh, mm. that would be so, cool. Just the just the 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 idea or the concept of having you could build a massive mesh, but in reality it's only a couple of hundred polygons, and there's lots and lots of instances making it up. Doesn't uh, Lightwave CAD do that somehow already? It kind of it kind stores of does. the instance information for it. It, it creates items. kind of it's like a what's the, it's like those Powergon type scenarios. Oh yeah. But it, but it's still not like fully supporting it. It it's just is sort of a bit of a hack, which is a really cool hack. But I'm yeah. like, it, how good would it be if we could put instances? Um, I mean, as an example, Archviz, you just like go right. I'm in my, I'm, I'm in you know because the way in which you work in modeling, you work in layers and states and yeah. and you hide stuff and then you just go. Well, I would just want to add like 15 chairs. Yeah, and I'm, and I just want to put them. I want that one there. I want that one there. Um, I'll just model a cushion. I'll stick that there. Uh, but it's actually just one instance, and now it would be like it makes the geometry heavier because you can't use instances in Modeler. Yeah, yeah, that that's not really common to do that. You know, it's, it definitely would be more common just to build a one chair and then clone it in layout. But I, I I'm sure they can maybe come up with a way if you. Just instead of when you hit Control C, maybe it's like uh, Control H for inst or I don't know uh, instance of it or something or Control I. That would be cool. Or even like uh, basic, you know, like a bit like what you said, basic, the most basic um, procedural geometry generation in Modeler, a mirror state. So you build half and you hit mirror, and uh, yeah. it's 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 a, it's a live instanced mirror version of it that's cool don't Chew, don't Chew Arts don't had that. <laughs> yeah they had the virtual mirror uh but i don't i think you had a commit to it at the end obviously yes yes um, because it yeah you, you're working on half but it's sort of virtually yeah but i would love just for that to be like and then you send it a layout and the, and the mirror instances then just live in layout and in modeler and you don't have to bake it down so your mesh is half the size <laughs> And then yeah. it makes it snappier to work with. It's just less geometry, less, you know, just it's smarter. Yeah, just smarter. I agree. That would be mm. great. Because yeah. then, then especially if if, if lay if layout if you know if that was there, because I do that a lot, right? In in interior design work, we do. You know, we are cloning chairs and items, a lot of items usually, and it'd be kind of neat just to lay them out in modeler, yeah, uh, instead of always having to do it in layout even though i'm used to it but it's very difficult to explain to when when people because people are i've noticed there's very much this sort of mindset thing where you have layout guys and modeler guys uh -huh. and and the ones who when they come into modeler because they use layout and they're going oh i don't understand how you navigate it <laughs> and how you move around and and i'm a bit like that when i go into layout like for certain types of things it's awful to try and move around in the scene because it's really set up like a camera environment yeah. not a modeling environment environment and so i would if the first thing that you would have to have in layout would be a modeling environment inside of layout otherwise it would be rubbish yeah you know? yeah you would need a really like i said my always dream was like why couldn't it just be like the tab it is now it says modeler when you click on it it yeah. changes the layout interface to look like modeler including you know the nav and you know i, I can see how it gets complicated because in, in our max pipeline but it is nice. They have isolation mode, right? So say you had a huge yeah. scene and you had a tree out way in the distance and you want to pick that model, tree. And you just yeah. got that on its own. And there's it just no isolates it. And... That's right. Mm -hmm. Or even if it brings it back to the origin where it was, right? When you're in the modeling mode, you do your tweaks, boop, and then it applies. 
because you know one of the things I always uh, kind of boasted about Lightwave to them, to the way Max worked was the fact that hey, look, if I wanted to change this tree and add a thousand trees in layout, I just open my model up, change, and then oh, they all get updated, you know. Where in sometimes in Max, if you did an instance it or something, it'd be it the workflow would be more of a pain in the butt. Like if you really yeah. wanted to change it, you really couldn't. Uh, not not like the lightweight approach because since the object was its separate entity, so mm. you know it yeah. has its advantages there too sometimes. But I think a, a edit mesh kind of or poly stack would be good. Mm. Uh, I mean, like I said, we want the dreams. If you can get modeler <laughs> uh, navigation layers in a layout type system, that would be cool. But I, I don't know what that <laughs> would require. I mean. <laughs> They're probably like, well, just hit that button and watch that other program open. Look, you have it. <laughs> it yeah, I think I think that in a way, I would rather they focus on getting modeler and layout to a better position before they worry about merging them. Almost like, as yeah. you said, things like having layer states in layout would be probably way more important oh. than getting modeler in layout because it's yeah, just it so much utility for artists um, who are doing that kind of work and getting the whole kind of workflow just where you just go right i've created four different layer states hit render yeah. walk away don't have to bake out versions none of that nonsense uh, what i would love to see is just some more cleanup in the fact like if you're if you're working in uh, octane or even vpr you have to be very careful with modeler right because if sometimes yeah. the blending is happening and you and you do something like you clicked on the modeler button or like oh no i had vpr running <laughs> bye layout <laughs> See <you> later. <laughs> have a nice nap I, I didn't hit the save button dang it <laughs> yeah i'm sure everyone in octane especially it's like no it does not want you to click on modeler at all so uh, it'd be kind of neat if it just said, are you sure you want to do that? You want to hit save <laughs> before I go ahead and give you the light wave has crashed. You later. <laughs> Maybe they, if they just added in a hook on plugins, which are sensitive. And if you also, if you've got um, Octane running, and you hit a button and it just goes, ah, that is a button which will cause a crash. So we'll yeah, tell yeah. you, are you sure you want to do that? And I'll be like, definitely not. I did not mean to press that. <laughs> yeah. Um, at least have a closed modeler first and say, all right, save. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you don't care about your modeler tweak. I know you're going to make a tweak, but you know, it's, it depends, right? I, Cause you know, I, I always did like the fact even before the hub, right? Maybe it's a, the hub needs to be changed. But they are pretty interactive to each other. Uh, you yeah. know, one of the, even back in the day, oh, I can go back to modeler, do my tweak, go to layout update, and just go back and forth freely, you know, and not really, it didn't crash very often. It, it seems a lot more with the render engines. I can't think of another instance where I was having it crash. May, always mainly when rendering. So if they can solve that, that would be kind of cool. Mm, so. Yeah. And I, I like the idea of, uh, I, I kind of want to see them, it'd be kind of neat if they sold modeler separate and then tacked on. That's why if the Lightwave render engine was a plugin, they could just tack that on somehow, give it lights. Because uh, I don't know, do you guys work in any um, kind of isolated 3D software, meaning like some simple online 3D software at all? Mm, nope. Not really, but no. I, no. Uh, one software that, because since I, I do a lot of interior design work, we use something called Homestyler. And Homestyler is a standalone application. It's all cloud-based. Uh, and it's really meant for interior design. But it is so easy. And the renders are super pretty. And I'm like, wow. I always just think like they if... Um, you know, maybe modeler, like maybe, maybe modeler could be its own thing and they can have its own render engine that's lightweight, mm. just separate. And if people just want to model and sculpt in modeler and then just add some lights and hit a pretty render button, that would be kind of neat. Doesn't do animation, doesn't do all that stuff because that's already in layout, but that would be kind of a cool little disconnect. Mm. Um, but anyways, back to Homestyler. Uh, so I do use lightweight with Homestyler, but it has a weird pipeline because I can do all my modeling in modeler i can import it into homestyler but i have to use the max format so <laughs> oh. because it was a uh, homestyler was uh, originally an autodesk base yeah. 
Oh, okay. Unfortunately. Okay. I keep asking them to at least give me FBX or OB, OBJ support so I can skip that part of it. But man, if you if you haven't used these kind of standalone 3D software, uh, I had sent before 2023 came out to Andrew just a document that shared how their render engine works. Uh, and hopefully, I don't know, I don't know how Lightway would do it, but they use uh, obviously um, cloud-based rendering. And you can do a nice 1080p render and it's like, you know, five minutes, three minutes, two minutes, and it's pretty. And when it saves the image, this is really cool. It has, uh, it stores all the passes you would think you would want, right? And in, in the render. So imagine it renders it. Oh, I'm, let me look mm -hmm. at my render. And you know, like the image viewer, imagine the Im image viewer already having like, hey, do you want to edit this image? Do you want to edit the lights? And then you you click the light map and then you can toggle the GI, every single light group that you made, because it's all interior design. So you got a lot of uh, secondary bounces and, you know, uh, can lights, rim lights, all that kind of stuff. And you can tweak those right after the image is done. Mm. And then you can say, oh, now I want to, oh, I don't like the way this floor <clears throat> color turned out. So then you can go to the image editor of it and then it already has all the ID passes. So you just select the pretty beauty pass, like the floor, and then it brings up hue saturation adjustments, color adjustments, warm tone. It has depth of field, everything just based on this one. I mean, it's good for single renders. Maybe it could even do sequences. Um, but like such easy uh, rendering and control, because like if you think of 3Ds, right? I mean, maybe for you, Cageman, but when you render out multiple passes, there is kind of a standard of passes you always need. And yeah. to me, those should always be turned on and accessible. And if Lightwave somehow flipped those on, even if you did the F9 render, and then it go ahead and gave you all those, to, and then tweaking right there of the image is awesome. Like you yeah. don't have to go to Photoshop. You don't have to go, to, you can just sit there. They have all the dials for the light passes. They have all the dials for depth of field. They have all the ID mm. passes. So you can isolate what you want to color correct. It's pretty neat. If you haven't tried it, I suggest you guys. Uh, the, the funny part is in a way, if you do some of the more basic passes in Lightwave, that's possible, except there's no internal compositing editor, which is what you would need. And if they just had a basic, uh, it would be lovely, it was nodal, but you know, a basic um, compositing editor where you just go, right, here's a breakdown of all the passes and they're all connected and pre-wired because obviously you would want them all in the standard format. And you yeah. just click on that layer and you go, I'll, I'll increase the brightness in that. Just ramps yeah, up that's that all light it does. contribution. Yeah, because it's you a can even, process. You can even turn them off. Now, obviously, just like any 3D engine, right, it will have a breaking point, right? If you flip off the lights... It might make something too dark or look weird, but you can you can change it. The two things on those, you get the intensity, right? It's brightness of all the light passes, plus uh, the Kelvin, plus if it's cooler or warmer, and that's it. But yeah. every single every single light you throw in there will have its own little separate thing, and it you just mess with it. And then mm. what's neat is you can tell it to keep the original image still as well. And yeah. go ahead, and so that way, if you need to go back to it, but it's even smart. If you, if I go back after I did my tweaks, it would actually uh, remove the last thing you did. It'd say, "Hey, you, you want us to remove all the tweaks you did?" Yes, because I want to start over. But mm. it's kind of neat as an editor because I can really just touch up the the image right there. And then if I wanted to do more in Photoshop, I can save out the beauty pass and the ID pass separate so I can continue editing in a post process. So I, if their image editor did that or something, that would be. Yeah, about about that, uh, I mean, uh, I just visited uh, Prol. I don't know if, it, if that is the correct pronunciation. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Prol, Prol Design, uh, that's right. which is absolutely beautiful images there. Is, is that the stuff that you're doing right now? Uh, your, your main yeah, thing? So main thing is is all interior so we do a, a lot of uh what's kind of cool i'm kind of the best of both worlds before uh working in the you know gaming industry and you know those type of industries everything i did was digital but now being in this world 
you know, you, I, I uh, developed a lot during, I uh, worked for an industrial company for a little while um, and got to learn how to use laser machines and CNC machines. Um, and having my lightweight background is great because I've done, I've done so many cool things. Like for this company, I, I would do uh, using Lightwave and Unity, I would basically make uh, the, a virtual warehouse for them that they were going to build in their backyard. And I would use uh, Lightwave to build all the content use Unity to make the uh, AR version that they can walk around the space behind their mm. <laughs> behind their office there virtually. Like we were literally walking around this demo I made inside Unity where they can see uh, their new warehouse and what it does with these big solar skids. So it's really cool to take the technology I have now and even based it on real things. So a lot of those, some of those renders that look like wooden tiles, we do these things called geo walls so imagine you had like see behind me these beams but imagine instead of just using obviously beams that get milled from say your lumber yard i can cnc cut different shapes so mm. i use a, a octane rendering and uh we use corel and illustrator to create the vector shapes but i bring all those in and create the pretty looks as a proof of concept right visually uh, and i do that for clients for some of their walls if they want a cool cnc based cut wall i'll mm. develop that all in lightwave and octane and then present that to the um the clients so it's pretty neat like a lot of our renders that we have most of the clients think they're real places and half of them are just re renders because <laughs> yeah. you know they they can't tell uh and they love it for our pipeline they love it too because we like I said, showing a client what it looks like in physical 3D space with, you know, real world lighting and all that stuff sells the idea and the vision so much faster than if you just, you know, say Photoshop it or uh, there's something called mood boards, kind of like a photo collage we do as well as part of our, our pipeline and pass, but the 3D rendering is great. And we've done a few at the end of the video, I believe I put the... Uh, virtual rendering. It was rendered in Homestyler, but I was using Lightwave as uh, just a rendered version of it offline for them. So, you know, I, I, out here in the States, we have, to, you know, when you buy a house, it's called Zillow, and you can go ahead and walk around spaces like houses. It's those 360 cameras. So instead, we do that stuff using Lightwave and Homestyler, and we can create virtual walkthroughs for for people's houses that aren't bu being built yet. So imagine like we have a client that wants to build this huge summer house. We'll mm -hmm. build a virtual walkthrough where they can click, you know, to walk through the kitchen, walk through it, but it's all 3D. None of it is real, not even built yet. And then every time I show that, like, oh, that's cool. Where is this? Where is this located? So it's <laughs> not any, it's not even built yet. <laughs> oh, that's so super. it's just really cool that we we do that. And, and Lightwave, as I said, is part of that pipeline. And, uh, you know, I said the Octane is great, renders super fast. And of course, for marketing, we use a lot of it where we can do rendered out animations and yeah. do real pretty stuff for our, our social media. Yeah, by the way, so, uh, now, now did, did you see the, because you mentioned Unity uh, at some point as yeah. well. Uh, did you see the Unreal Bridge video? Yes, yes. I actually used the Unreal Bridge a while back and I, it was one of the documentations they put in my image because that one I described with the warehouse in the backyard for the industrial company. Mm -hmm. uh, I actually did a test inside Unreal, um, but my Unreal chops aren't as good as my Unity chops, so I converted it down to Unity to go ahead and yeah. you know put it in the a the AR world. But yeah, it was it was awesome even using it then, bringing it over into Unreal. I think that was twenty was it twenty twenty? Yeah, or maybe, 20, maybe no, yeah. Yeah. before that. I yeah, think it yeah, was 2019 remember. where they introduced uh, the Unreal Bridge. Yeah, so during, thing, during so. beta, I'm like, sweet, I'm using, uh, creating this thing for this, for Unity. Let me try, let me just mess with the Unreal and see how it works. And it was, it was pretty. I mean, the Unreal Engine, when you load anything in there out the gate, like, wow, you got motion blur. It's, it's just so pretty yeah. <laughs> compared to Unity. Unity is not pretty. Unity, I had to add a lot of little bells and whistles to make that one as, I would say, as pretty as Unreal. Um, but yeah, it's, I love it. I haven't really messed with the 2023 yet. I did download it and update, uh, my unreal, but I haven't touched it yet. Mm. Yeah. I played around with it. And the cool thing is that 
you you essentially can do the shading inside of Lightwave uh, and it updates. Yeah. So you have Unreal, if you have two screens, you have Unreal on one and Lightwave on the other. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's amazing. And, you know, camera animations and this, you know, it, it, because the video that I saw, it doesn't really does do it justice because it doesn't justice. actually because it doesn't actually show how fast it is uh, uh, yeah i gotta mess with it because I, I i love real-time engines and there's a guy that wrote a wonderful plugin for unity but he hasn't updated it yet uh i'm not sure I'd, I'd reach out to him i'm not sure if he is going to update it um because i know he's working oh the, the import think, export plugin for lightwave yes it's phenomenal i've used it just a couple mm. times and I liked how quick it was to bring over the scenes. Um, so uh, hopefully he can update it or maybe talk to Lightwave Digital to see if they can maybe take it from, because I, I think Unity is still a good choice for, uh, for an engine. And that tool I thought was great. Whatever he was doing compared to what uh, New Tech had did was so much better. New Tech was just kind of taking an FBX behind the scenes and doing it. This guy is somehow taking the Lightwave scene and... Mm. Uh, lightweight objects and actually bringing them into the engine mm. in some way it's it's pretty cool is it the norwegian yeah. guy that that made scripts yeah. for that yeah I, 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 not erikals erikals is another guy uh oh i have his uh, mental fish is it no no it wasn't i don't think it was mental fish oh okay no, he's got I, some great I, toys another one yeah he did some a while ago i haven't seen him for a while yeah, yeah i haven't no, seen him for a while either i don't okay. know if you go to the unity storefront it's still there mm. If you just type in Lightwave, it would show up because it's the only Lightwave plugin on the store. But uh, <laughs> really, really cool. I mean, even his little video, video demo would kind of show. Oh, like okay. You literally, you save out a Lightwave scene and you have Unity. And the Lightwave scene is nested within the Unity's project. And whoop, it just, everything's there. You just hit import. and Wow. Okay. It's like, that's pretty neat. Oh, so, wow. uh, yeah. But it is broken. <laughs> it does not work. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, so moving on a little bit here, uh, yeah. and this is more of a philosophical question about the community, and that is, what do you think is needed to make the community stay positive, constructive, engaging, and energetic? Well, I, you know, I think if they, I like the videos they're releasing. So I think if they keep keeping people engaged with new content, like I'm kind of starting. <clears throat> my uh lightwave content now i don't know if i'll do more videos um because i enjoy it and i, I like that the community shares there's lots of great youtube videos mm -hmm. and you kind of want to you know that that is the thing social media is huge like for our business if we didn't use social media we wouldn't have a business no, true. so you know you kind of need that and especially for 3d software i mean blender is everywhere so even me, I'm going to add that Blender name if I if I'm going to copy something that Blender just to say hey that this is maybe someone from Blender would see this and go like oh no I'm curious about Lightwave you know so I think they should really keep pushing uh, social media and for the community I don't know I sometimes I don't know if it's because sometimes that we're older sometimes people seem a little crabby <laughs> <laughs> on the Lightwave because maybe because we're older. But it's like, hey, look, you know, to me, it's about supporting Lightwave, even through its downtimes and its up, ups and downs from the version I bought it, Lightwave version four, mm. I've always supported the software. Yep. It was never. And here's the thing is if you are in 3D and you made any money doing 3D, well, first of all, you have to be good at it to do that, right? But second of all, you know, Lightwave was always such a cheap cost. It's like, really? you're complaining about five hundred dollars and or 495 or whatever it is like you know light waves sometimes they're the the old days right they wouldn't have an upgrade for three years you know what's 495 dollars divided by three years mm. and i'm sure you bought you know like a starbucks if you looked at your starbucks for the yearly cost you probably spent a thousand dollars at starbucks you know oh, it's yeah. like come on yeah so if you if you enjoy the tool to me i'll always support lightwave digital you know, and, and give them even if I can give them more money, which I have before, like, Hey, I want to support them because I do want to see it grow. And I think people should, if you use it and you like it, support it. Even if it didn't have a feature, I'm sure you'll find something that you never messed with. And if, like I said, if you're in our industry and you make any money on 3d, it, 
Lightwave pays for itself several times. So I, I, yeah. I just want the community to kind of, you know, get out of their way <laughs> and, and then, and then also, you know, be grateful that we have it and maybe be a little bit more positive. I said videos would be great, more content. Um, if, if Lightwave Digital ever has the money or if I ever a lot of money, I, you know, I always want to even said, I need to help these guys work for them because I, I think they're a great talented group of people. I'll even just do my, my maybe videos occasionally, but I, I want to support. I think they just need more support. They need more people active and making videos and showing something that Lightwave does that is pretty cool that maybe X software doesn't do good or they didn't realize Lightwave can do that. Right. Mm. It's pretty deep software. So mm. yeah, like I, I love seeing a Lightwave guru, like his stuff with his, a crazy amount of graphics cards. <laughs> I had a Facebook post. I'm like, do you mind Bitcoin with those things? He's like, no, but I couldn't believe how it's like, oh, it's huge. <laughs> yeah. How yeah. many, is, is everything in real time for him with the octane? I like to see. His <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. Um, Lou, Lewis is also one of those that use octane a lot. And I think he has two machines that has four cards each in those machines uh, like uh, four of wow. uh, you know the highest end cards you know but yeah i yeah. mean if you make money you should support yeah if you make money man this community is great the software is great there's a lot of stuff it does that is still great even even like hyper voxels i've used those i could i would even use them today because they are they are they still work and can be pretty for the mm. right uh, mm, yeah type of job so i mean I, it's a great tool I, I just want the community to stay positive and, you know, I, it would be great to see. I don't see enough of this either. Like, I don't know how many people in the live community, but it'd be kind of cool to see more likes and shares and, and communication going in, in the social media channels. Even Facebook has, you know, lots of lightwave channels, but not too many likes and shares and things like that. Mm -hmm. I think social media is like massive now. And if, if lightwave digital can keep pushing it, uh, if like you're look at what you're doing, I mean, you're, <laughs> this is awesome for lightweight. This is actually a great thing. You, <laughs> you know, the importance of social media, they, they should be doing this, but look at, we love, we love lightwave in the community. So it's great to see this kind of thing happen. This lightwave digest. That's I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, for, for me, it was super important, but you know, <laughs> I was hanging out. The reason why I started this um, uh, was because I think it was the same. What was you know when, when we got this message that there was this new, uh, oh, yeah. yeah, and we were hanging out after the first sort of announcement meeting. Oh or yeah, something the like hangout on Discord. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, and I was like, okay, here's a guy that worked on Babylon Five. Here's a guy that did that. Here's a guy that did. You know, I was like, shit. There's so many lightweight stories. There's so many talented people that I want to interview, like programmers, artists. You know. And I was like, oh, I, I need to, you know, and then I fell asleep snoring at some point as well. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was in the meeting that you were in, right? Yeah. That's oh, yeah, that's right. It maybe, was in the maybe, meeting. That's right. Maybe, you fell maybe, asleep. Maybe that is why you had me muted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe it was. Yeah, he's, 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 he's just been muted on Discord ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but but yeah, uh, I've seen I mean, this snoring sound. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know, you know, having, having people like uh, Taron coming back, you know, it was oh, like yeah. wow, you know, and having him on, you know, we, we talked for over three hours or something like that. Well, we are also closing on on that mark as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but yes, yeah, we, it's, I mean, it's, it's a fun group of guys. I mean, we're we're all passionate about what we do. Yeah, yeah I know it's late over there. Um, you know, so I, I, I just think the community should, you know, they, like they, we should have, I don't know if there's 1500 people, uh, lightweight users, if or even more, they should be watching this and they should be liking all your videos. They should, cause that's gonna, we, like I said, we do a lot of social media. So boosting it's mm, true. just in the, in the filter of the world. I mean, there's no reason lightwave can't have that kind of type of people interested in it, especially 3d software. And, and especially multiple pipelines, if you use Lightwave with Photoshop or Max or Maya or Unity or <laughs> you and me with Homestyler, you know I'm going to start tagging these other softwares because it, it would bring other 3D users mm, yeah. 
to at least be maybe check it out, right? Like, oh, what's going on over there? I didn't know it did that. Yeah, that's the, cool. The funny thing is that with uh, <laughs> the, the the episode with Luke Whitehorn, he talked about uh, Cavalry, uh, a new yeah. 2D software, and uh, <laughs> actually we showed some some uh, stuff about that. And those guys actually came into the YouTube channel and said, "Hey, thanks for showing our software." <laughs> oh yeah that's cool yeah they that's ask, really cool yeah so it's kind of like okay that we should well because if you if you are a good company you should be interacting with your own social media so if someone hashtags your software then you need to go in there and be like oh you know great to see us in the wild and the people are excited and enthused about that software and we need to be doing that and and Lightwave need to be doing that and yeah tra- creating this sort of cyclical kind of feedback um and you know because obviously he was highly praised of the software and they're like oh that's so cool that we actually get to hear about um people in the real world using it not just some you know marketing professional or whatever it's a genuine just down-to-earth guy going oh actually i love the software it's got all these really cool features and i love the you know this and they may have not heard that before yeah yeah i never heard heard about cavalry before luke mentioned no. it and so that's cool. There's, there are so many cool things out there that you don't know when you're like, actually, I'm quite interested now that you mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah. I think when you get these videos going, um, I think uh, once you uh, get it done, you know, send me the, the links over. I'll throw them all on my social media. I know like when I, when I am interested in something, I'll hit up all the Facebook channels and, yeah. and then, you know, we repost the links, um, you know, even in other 3Ds. Now we mentioned so many different 3D softwares here. We can post it on mm. Unity. We can post it on <laughs> yeah. Unreal. We can post on like you have all these channels, and why not? Because like I said, people who don't know Lightwave just think it's probably nothing, right? But but they might watch this and go like, oh, I didn't know it did that. I know now I'm interested. I'm I'm curious. Mm. Yeah, you know? true. We go download the free trial and, and mess with it. Yeah, you just so, let's... spread the word. Uh, I guess it's, yeah, it's yeah. The, the message. Um, is there anything we didn't ask you that you would like to talk about? Or is there like anything, the, or is there anything that we talked about that you wouldn't want to expand on? Uh, the only thing I could think of is like I was like that question you ask, like, hey, if you had, uh, all, but what is it, um, Elon Musk's money? <laughs> if I had Elon Musk and <laughs> oh, he had his type of money, question. what would I do? Yeah, what would I do with Lightwave? Well, if I had Elon Musk's money, first Lightwave would be free to everyone. And mm. Second, where you would monetize on it, you would monetize through. It's development of tools and plugins, possibly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I would definitely make Hypervoxels four. Three's been around way too long. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, like like they have so many neat um, plugins and tools that really never like. I never understood why we never went from Hypervoxels three to four to five to six to seven to eight to nine. Like, well, you know, that should have been the value metric. Oh, shift yeah. along the way mm-hmm. um so things like that i probably would update uh and if if i didn't have his money but had a decent amount uh you know i would probably still have a free base light wave in order to compete like look at unreal's free unity's free and mm-hmm. they have these additional things right if you don't want the unity logo you got to pay this a, a year or uh home styler i'll tell you how home styler work home styler is free to use but in order to take advantage of all its models and all its things, you pay some a yearly fee, or maybe it's even monthly. They have that, and where they make their money, or, or where they can, is you actually buy the rendering. So, mm, yeah. so if you want a lot of frames, or uh, I think it's like seventy-five frames you get for HD for lo- low definition, it's it's endless. But they're not so great, right? They're like half HD renders. Mm. They're usually pretty pixelated, not not good to look at, good for test rendering. Um, but those type of things, maybe you look at it in those steps, like what's modular based, what what could we sell? Uh, like, like the Unity is a perfect example, the Unity store. I think if New Tech had more of a store with all the third party stuff, mm. where they could just purchase it right there. Believe they're planning that. I believe they're planning yeah. to. Yeah, mm. but it doesn't need to be the interface because I, I kind of don't like it. You know, if you have a, a Photoshop, right, it brings up all those windows now, like buy this, buy that, or cloud base and, and cloud based rendering. If somehow, I don't know how they do it, but what I love about this home seller, you can uh, literally send it a 4K image and get it back in less than five minutes. 
Yeah. And I know if you use the lightwave renderer or even Octane, you're waiting for an hour or two. So it must I, be I, using some type of cloud based rendering to just make that oh, thing yeah. happen the, so fast. They, um, if, if they were smart <laughs> about it, I think we should have, and I didn't originate this idea. Um, I think Elmo was one of the first people that said it. It's just create an Amazon cloud instance that, that new tech, or oh, oh, sorry, Lightwave Digital has, <laughs> and you can just hit, you just hit render. And you'd be like, oh, do you want to render this faster? Go to the cloud, you click a button, and it'll be like, oh, it'll be $12 to do uh, 400 frames. You'd be like, it'll take you eight hours, and you'd be like, fine, done. Yeah, people Don't have to pay worry that. about it. Yeah, they would. Yeah, I mean, maybe the economy at scale wouldn't work. I don't know. But it would the facility to just simply go render to cloud and and you walk away and it just takes what it takes and because you know any any freelancer you don't always have the ability to have like well i've got my 25 gpus in a cupboard somewhere and yeah, my, right, and my right. office is rather warm <laughs> <laughs> no, neither, neither. Yeah. yeah that's exactly what homesteller does and i think that's yeah. a smart business model because anyone who uses it if they want the prettier renders and they can even do the same thing right and make the the standard, you know, maybe 720p or under f for free, right? But maybe a limit. And then, but you want the pretty renders or you want the cool new image editor we have that you can tweak your lights and your, you know, mm. depth of field. That is part of this, you know, subscription thing or something like that. And make mm. it make it affordable and cheap because who wouldn't do that? Oh, I got to render a thousand frames, 12 bucks. Psh, here you go. <laughs> yeah, that's nothing. <clears throat> yeah. and, and every time you're rendering you're paying them money and it, yeah. you know, it helps the, it helps the company because they'll get a cut that's right you know, so the, digital, so the, they need residual income that's the thing yeah. that will float it either through some type of plug-in store it needs to be residual based i mean adobe did it it's unfortunate it worked <laughs> you know but it did uh but that's 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 what we're in now and i think if they did it if the software was either really cheap or free and then they do these type of things this render cloud this image editor thing uh, hyper voxels for the plugin people and they and even lightweight digital gets a cut of all that if they you know put their plugins on there something i mean that's how unity does it unreal does it so mm -hmm. i think if they copy that but don't make it uh, a crazy amount of money i really want them to have that residual money coming in because that's going to get us stuff faster oh yeah true yeah, yeah, but even just not even the money thing, which I think would be great for them, right? But just this sort of functionality where if you're a freelancer and you need to do a full HD animation and you've done like one frame and it took 45 minutes, as in your example, you could spend hours tweaking it. Or you could be just like, I'll spend a hundred bucks and send it to a farm. Yeah. Now, it's possible now, but it's like a faff. If you can just sort of go, uh, I'll connect to the Lightwave cloud, it'll estimate, right, okay, I, um, one frame tucks that, mm, okay, I, I'll, I'll pay that, I'll pay that. And you hit render, and you send it off to the cloud, and it's just all handled behind the scenes in a very user-friendly method. That's yeah. the important thing, I think. Because, yes, I mean, yeah. there's always been those guys that know how to, oh, I'll, I'll set up my own virtual cloud using Amazon Cloud and I'll upload my own operating system. And you're like, right, yeah. most people can't do that. No, no, most no. Yeah, just get an S3 terminal and then go ahead and create all that stuff. And, yeah, that, that would be great. I think that would be, I think they should also do, like, uh, where they offer, say, some subscription model where you get something right away. So then you don't even think, because mm. there's the people who said, hey, I do a lot of rendering and I need I need a, you know, 50,000 frames a year. I'll just pay this subscription fee. Keep taking my, you know, 40 bucks a month or whatever. I don't care. I can render unlimited, you know, some mm. type of, everyone likes the, the package kind of things. There's this, this, or well, maybe a custom one, like you said, if it was truly custom and I, it can even tell you how much it. <sighs> Well, well, who does that? Is it, it Garage Farm that does that? Garage, Garage Farm, I Farm does it. it. Yeah, and I, I don't, I've not used their services, but I've heard incredibly good things. Maybe yeah. it's a partner with Garage Farm. Maybe it's Garage Farm does. Yeah. There um, you go. Maybe they do it on the cloud. Maybe it's the partner with them. Because they, they already have it set up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. 
maybe maybe they figure it out a way of doing it so that you might buy your license of light wave might come with 200 free credits you know where you just go oh i can play with it That's i right. can see whether that works out for me but the point is is that end to end it's the ease that's it's the easy the... use that's right everything is that's... so fast nowadays and everyone wants that and, and even me i'm like i don't want to spend time and having to go to this photoshop and this this after the renderings if i can just edit it right there in the image viewer right why not so uh, yes and that's the unfortunate world we live in but i i think that lightweight would take off if it had some mm. of these things mm. you know especially if it uh could you know make things faster and more immediate to the user and everyone's used to it now that's why everyone is used to paying some type of subscription fee some type of all right i'll pay for this service because i need it or some plug-in thing whatever it might be so i, I you know i want them to kind of not go totally they maybe they could have just buy the software as a thing as well but to get more users to try it you need something free and you need some hook right you need something that says oh how can what do I like about this? Oh, this image editor is awesome. I can do all these tweaks right after, after the fact. No one else does that. Mm. Something. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. some solid ideas. Who yes. would you want to see on this podcast? Ah, God. There was a few people. Is it, um, is it Carm 3 d I forgot who, who posts a lot of their videos on, on YouTube. I don't know if it's Carm. And then is it, uh, I don't know how to say his name. Is it? Blind me, blind. So he he's he's a node genius. On he posts a lot of videos with nodes on YouTube, and my brain usually just shoots out one side oh, of my head. Oh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, yeah, Wi-Fi. Nice. Yeah, it's it's incredible to watch his uh, stuff, and uh, we already talked about him. He'll be on, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> Teron, that's great. Uh, you know, I think those type of users are great to to have on it would be great to get who, who you mentioned it before who did the um the uh the little head with the eye chris, know, jones. He's, he's, chris, chris jones, jones chris jones he i know he's i don't know if he's moved on or what he does now but yeah he's a uh, he has, but yeah. he but he's might, in blender because, i know right he's yeah, trying to he recreate is. his guy in blender Maybe we'll just try and be like, hey, do you want to come and talk about your time in Lightwave? Um, maybe we can tempt him back, you know, tempt him back. We need a few <laughs> changes, I suspect. <laughs> yeah, he'd be great. Uh, Dennis, uh, is it Point? Pointer? Point on? Pontonier. Yeah. Yeah. His site is yeah. down, and I don't know how to contact him. And also, he doesn't speak English. But yeah, I mean, this has been absolutely fantastic to have you on, Tony. Fantastic. Um, appreciate great, it. Thanks, guys. Great ideas. Uh, and it's been lovely to actually meet you because I think I'm, I'm well aware of you from social media. But, you know, when you're kind of like putting people's faces to, to icons. Yeah, and... there, yeah. I've been around a lot, but yeah, I really wasn't usually out in the open too much on the community, or at least, you know, during the, the main parts. But I love been a lightweight user a long time, mm. just like you guys. And it's a, a great tool. I'm glad to see everyone excited about uh that it is alive and kicking again. Thank you all for watching and listening to this month's episode. Be sure to tune in next time so that you don't miss out on all the goodies we've got for you. In the meantime, if you have any news stories you'd like us to know about, you can reach us in the comment section or send an email to lightwavedigest at gmail.com with the word news in the subject line. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment. Your engagement is really important to us, so thanks in advance for your support. So until next month, always light the wave.